Hello and welcome to Bread Theory. I am your host, Zach, and, to, and joining me tonight is my wife, Amanda. And we are going to be talking tonight about uh, Abby Shapiro. She is the, the sister of Ben Shapiro, and she has a lot to say about a lot of topics. And tonight she's, we're going to be showing her a video tackling uh, feminism. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that right now, and we're going to jump in to give our own thoughts. Let's start it from the beginning. Hello, Classic Crew, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to be talking about what feminists won't tell you. I've been thinking a lot about feminism lately, and it really started when I watched a Christina Hoff Summers interview, which led me down a rabbit hole <laughs> as I started watching a bunch of her videos and then watching videos from other women who know a lot about this topic. This is Christina and Hoff Summers. It was fat. Um, you know what? I haven't actually looked her up. We, I we think should probably we should look, her up. look her up real quick. Christina Hoff Summers. I'm guessing she's just kind of a basic liberal from the way that she Christ describes her on. Christina Hoff Summers. Oh, there it is. First thing up. There we go. Christina Google her me. American author. So this is the only person that she's going to cite throughout the entire video. Um, and it just happens to be someone that agrees with her. But Imagine let's, that. Let's click it. She's from the American Enterprise Institute. She says that she's a Democrat. Or she will be saying that momentarily. <laughs> she talks about feminism and free speech. Christina Hoff Summers is a resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, where she studies the politics of gender and feminism, as well as free speech, or free expression, due process, and the preservation of liberty in the academy. Oh, preservation, we know where that's going. Mm -hmm. Before joining AEI, Dr. Summers was a philosophy professor at Clark University. She's best known for her defense of l classical liberal feminism and her critique of gender feminism. Her books include Freedom Feminism, It's Surprising History and Why It Matters Today, One Nation Under Therapy, <laughs> co-authored with Sally Satil, The War Against Boys, which was released... I, 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 in 2001. I recall that one a little bit. I remember people talking about how tough it is today for boys and, and how really it's, it's unfair and, and it's all because of, of feminists and stuff like that. And, and I, I remember if you dig into what she was saying there at all, you, you find that no, it's, it's the fault of strict gender roles and like boys mm -hmm. not being able to express their emotions. That has nothing to do with feminism. Right, but I think men also in the opposite. force amongst each other like hey man right. up right that that don't would be, be such a pussy right those are examples of upholding the mm -hmm. patriarchy you know the big bad uh scare word that that conservatives like to use patriarchy likes a, a lot of things um but especially whoops <laughs> we're having to share headphones now because last time i had it on uh wireless headphones and we could both listen at the same time but it, it Producing bad feedback and, this and is, sound. I hate headphones. Recording. I know you hate headphones, and I'm not a big fan either, but we're just going to have to struggle through this time until I can figure out something better. So special. You know, I think I need one of those splitters so we can plug two headphones into the same jack, and then you can use the over-the-ear ones. Yeah. But anyway, back to the topic. So yeah, the, enforcing strict gender roles is not a feature of feminism, believe it or not. It is a feature of the patriarchy that likes to preserve the, the current model. She's a video blog, The Factual Feminist. Yeah. That sounds right up a Shapiro's alley. Mm-hmm. Oh, her experience. She is a woman. Is that her experience? Sorry, that was a low blow. Okay. okay. Maybe we should get back to the video. Uh, let's get back to the video. <laughs> We'll definitely have a lot to say about... Fascinating to what hear what about. Christina Hoff Summers had to say. Now, if you don't know who Christina Hoff Summers is, she works with the American Enterprise Institute, and she actually has a YouTube series called The Factual Feminist. Now, a lot of people on the internet also call her Based Mom. Maybe so Christina Hoff Summers, next, her thing yeah. is speaking yeah, out it. about the problems with modern feminism. Now, she is not conservative. She is 
a Democrat and she... Fun fact, Democrats can be conservative. Were you aware of that? Yeah, Joe Biden. Case in point. <laughs> yeah, just because you're on, on what the American uh, right considers the left, uh, that doesn't mean that you are actually not still conservative and wanting to preserve things, maybe rearrange some of the faces that, that are in power, but, but pretty much preserve the entire power structure and, and the way that, that the culture is, um, that still makes you a conservative, you know? So fun. She and I so disagree fun. on some things, but on the topic of feminism, we do not disagree. And it was fascinating so to hear funny. her take on be things because time. all of a sudden I felt so like, oh my goodness, everything I've been feeling actually has I mean, I a reason. A now, one of the things that Summers talks about is the fact that despite feminism saying that women are so strong, women are stronger than men, they also have women feeling like fragile flowers. Okay, so. Right there is one red flag. Women are so strong, they're stronger than men. No feminist is ever going to say, well, I mean, some of them might, but like the, the, the bulk of, of people that study this sort of a subject and come up with philosophies around feminism are not going to say women are stronger than men. You know, that, that's just the, the idea. As, why don't we start out with what we consider feminism to be? Maybe that'll help kind of delineate our sure. position. So what, 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 is your def, what is your personal definition of what feminism means to you? Feminism is just about equalizing the world for men and women. Yeah. It's like equal opportunity. Yeah. Like equal respect. Equal respect. <laughs> equal expectations. Sure. For both. Yeah. Not, not saying, you know, you're a woman, you need to go into this career field. Right. You know, only men go into STEM or things like that. Yeah. I mean, that sounds pretty good to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I, would, I would use a slightly different word. I would use the word equity myself rather than necessarily equality because what equity to me uh, means is if some people have extra obstacles in their way, equity mm-hmm. helps remove those obstacles. Someone right, who doesn't have those obstacles, the they level. don't need that extra to to remove obstacles that aren't there. Obviously. Yeah, it's like the picture with the kids in the boxes. I'm sure we're all familiar with that meme for sure. Yeah. Oh, so, well, oh, just thought go, it was ahead a, go, go ahead and go ahead and so there's a picture it. with some kids in some boxes and they're watching a baseball game. Go ahead, just keep, and keep going. At first, each of the kids gets a box. However. Those kids are of varying heights. One is substantially taller than the other two and doesn't really need the box. Oh, maybe it's an adult because he's balding on the top. So, okay. It's hard to tell what it's supposed to be, but so regardless. Yeah. So on the left is equality. Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks for dropping down in front of the picture menu. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> so on the left is, is equality. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Equity. Zach's right. I should have used the word That's equity. okay. I mean, they're, they're very similar concepts. It's just that... Like Same this suffix. One, that this, this person happens to be shorter, whether they're, yeah. not, they're a child or whether they're an adult who just happens and to be very short. And as you can short. see, the child is very sad because he can't see the baseball game. Right, so so giving everyone the same help in that mm-hmm. situation is... is and then they can ends all up with see an it unequal and enjoy outcome. it together. Equity, on the other hand, you end up with an equal outcome because the resources have been allocated in a way that everyone has an equal chance of, you know, in this case, viewing the, the baseball game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I would say definitely equity is, is number one for me, equity between uh, all sexes and genders, as well as uh, bodily autonomy, the, the idea that you get to do with your body whatever you choose and no one can force you to do otherwise. I so. think that's a really important thing, and I think it's a thing that we're severely lacking right now. Yeah, so consent because comes into that a lot. Consent, and I also think about all the legislation that passes, that is passed by men and not women about women's bodies. Like Absolutely. Newsflash, jerk. You don't get to tell me what to do with my body. It's mine. I will decide. That would be like me telling you, well, guess what? I get to control how much Viagra you get. When you get older, then, <laughs> if we're going right. to play this game, yeah. it's God's will that you... Or, I mean, going even further, <laughs> saying that, you know, 
all men need to get the snip until they prove themselves to be worthy of, yeah. of being a parent. Oh. Yeah. So right. that would be a level of, of, of uh, violation of body autonomy that I'm sure most men could oh, they, come like, to grips with. No way. <sighs> I know. It's going to be, you're just going to have to roll. <laughs> it's going to be a common thing. I'm sorry. Earbuds do not like your ears for some reason. It's because they're big. It's because you hear so good. Anyway. I'm just going to sit here being annoyed. <laughs> oh, I see we have some uh, comments already. What about vaccines? Um, yeah, bodily autonomy is something that would definitely apply to vaccines, would it not? I don't think anyone is out there. I mean, that you hear people calling for everyone to mand be nan mandatorily vac vaccinated ugh, for certain things like getting on a plane or, or being in a large crowd. Uh, because of the chance that they would then violate other people's bodily autonomy with a disease that they may be carrying. Also, if it's that important to someone to not get a vaccine, you can also go to your primary physician and they can exempt you from the vaccine if it's really just absolutely sure detrimental that you just oh, won't yeah. get it on religion or principle or whatever. Or immunocompromised people. I mean, there's certain people well, that I mean, are allergic people, to constituents right. of the, the vaccine, right, which is all the more others. reason to Yeah, to absolutely. But that's why vaccinated. the people that can should yeah. So, be yeah. vaccinated. Plus, it's free. But, Vaccines are free. That's the only thing that our healthcare system really has going for itself. But that's a topic <laughs> for another day. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that does play into bodily autonomy. But for sure, vaccines... Mm -hmm. The issues of vaccines would be an issue of bodily autonomy, would it not? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'll be honest, I was a little apprehensive at first, even when I was offered my opportunity to mm -hmm. be vaccinated because I have underlying conditions. I was well, you nervous have, you have about a, which... You have an allergy, too, to something that's commonly in vaccines, so it's a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know... I mean, I was nervous and... Well, okay, you know what? I'm just going to be very transparent. I have genet... I'm a thrombophiliac mm -hmm. by genetics... And after hearing that COVID causes blood clots, but then also hearing that some of the vaccines cause blood clots and having already experienced blood clots, it definitely put me on edge to receive a vaccine. But after a lot of research and careful considerations, I ended up taking the Pfizer vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the doctor worked very closely with you and yep. knew your condition. So. Right. Yeah. Paired with me and was like, this, I think, is your best choice. Oh, yeah. But there are definitely people who are in similar circumstances to mm -hmm. yourself. Oh, absolutely. Maybe and even have uh, more vulnerability to actually getting vaccines. That, mm -hmm. yeah, no one would ever force that on someone who you're almost right. guaranteed to have an adverse reaction. Yeah. Bodily you're autonomy. It's a great fighting thing. for your life to put something in there you're not sure what's going to happen with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very good. In your own time. So... I, I forgot where our place even was with, with Abby, so let's check back in to see if uh, yeah. we've missed any critical facts. I'm sure um, we have. <laughs> and they think that women are victims. And the example that Summers brings up very often in interviews is that when she went to Oberlin to give a speech, they set up a safe space so that women who felt overwhelmed by her speaking on this topic could go there and feel like they weren't being attacked. So ironic when she has talked numerous times about how, you know, brave it is or, or how scary it is to come out as a conservative because people might attack you for your beliefs. Mm -hmm. it, it, it almost sounds like Abby wants to have a safe space to talk about conservative values and beliefs. But she's created that for herself. And she, she has created that for herself right here because she doesn't have to look at any of the comments. In fact, I mean, she could block all the ones that she doesn't like. Absolutely. Or delete them. Or delete them. That's her choice. Yeah. Same thing with, like, Twitch. Like, come on. As a Twitch streamer, you're going to get trolls all the time. That's just something that happens. Right. Not ideal, but it's there. But then you'll also have other people that in, come in that have a different viewpoint than you and actually want to have a legit conversation, a dialogue. Yeah. And, and, and that's important. And yet somehow she never has had anyone on her show... At least that I've seen. I don't know if I've seen no. every episode, but she never had anyone on her show that I'm aware of that even disagrees with her in the slightest. Like they've, yeah, you know, Most they've all been religious. Are on her side. They, yeah. They've all been conservative. Mm -hmm. um, she's maybe mentioned liberal friends, but like it sounds like they don't really 
talk politics it's probably on the purpose. same as her like friends of color oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's, it's her, sorry low blow it's again. her tokenization so, that's, so yeah. that she has a shield against any any attack i have a friend once more than likely i saw one <laughs> on the street okay <laughs> too far too far let's it's, go let's continue Let, let's let's hear about how abby cannot understand safe spaces for other people who might feel attacked when she herself constantly seeks those spaces for herself and this is a depressing thing to me in that women are not weak women did is, is like the feminist mantra that women are weak somehow have you I seen mean, that like on a slogan? Last time I checked, that's not what it was. I do think it's really interesting though the presets for society portray women as weak. Yeah, it's weird. That 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 must be from feminism though. That can't possibly be from any other yeah. cultural control. Definitely not. It. Totes. Right. And and furthermore, acknowledging that women have certain barriers that that men do not face can only mean that women are weak. It's it's like, you know, if you're running a race, and you're you're running against let's say let's say uh uh, uh what, was, what was that that really fast guy that bolt guy do you remember his name usain bolt usain bolt yeah let's say you're running against usain bolt and you're really scared about this race but somehow you manage to get him shackled to you know one of those like you know comic uh, uh weights that they put around uh, prisoners ankles and he's got like one on each ankle so he's got like 50 pounds of weight that he's having to drag behind him and what what I don't know. I think this is an. In, I don't, I'm thinking about him as a person and the analogy you're making. Okay. It's a little, okay. okay. Well, let's just say any any fast person, someone someone. Road anybody. runner. The, oh my god, the road runner, and no, oh, come on. A, All right, a, fine. A, a real person. Okay, fine. Go back to. Picture your a person you know that's fast, <laughs> if that's better for you, and and you're gonna put some weights around their ankles, and and you're also gonna say that in order to win the race, they have to run twice as far like you get a you get a 50 percent head start and and you know the 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 gun goes off and you know they try their best but they don't end up winning that race would you say that that's because they're weak or would you say that's because perhaps they have extra obstacles that you didn't have Mm -hmm. to face right they had a handicap yeah yeah that's what i would say but that's well they had barriers yeah yeah Extra ob- obstacles. Not exactly the same thing as, as calling them weak. So how she's contorting this into feminists say that women are weak because they face extra challenges is beyond me. Are strong. Women are so powerful and it makes me crazy to think about how often the left plays into this victim narrative. Okay. And here we go. Again. The, the conflation that if you were a victim, somehow that's something about you. As mm-hmm. though like if, if you uh, are walking down the street and someone sticks you up for your, your wallet, if, if you don't immediately slap the gun out of their hand, then you're a weakling and, and, and that's the only way that you can be a victim of that crime. Here's where I think she's coming from on that. Okay. I think she's coming from... The instances of, like, the Me Too movement Mm -hmm. and, like, cases of rape and assault. Like, she doesn't see the women as victims. Like... I mean, sure, if you just think that most women are lying. I mean, I don't know if that's weird. Because it's like, oh, it was brought up late. She's lying. It's not relevant now. If you just don't believe victims, then, yeah, yeah, you don't see the world as having any victims. Right, that's where I'm coming from. That's, or like that's definitely a possibility all this too. Legislation it's legislation really that's to been decipher. passed. Like we live in Minnesota here, and recently they passed something mm-hmm. where if the woman has been drinking or under some sort of um, other sub- illicit substances, yeah, uh, that they can't charge rape. Yeah. Because they themselves it was, it was are out of it. It was a really egregious which is, bill. Right. Which is really ridiculous to me because you think about how many men would tamper with a woman to drink. If or she, how many like, men turned... would just be like, you know, have another baby. I'm paying. Have another. Mm-hmm. Have another. Or that, like, That's a common technique I mean, of sleaze bags. When I was younger and would go to bars, I would constantly sit with my hands over the top of my cup. 
Is that because you that were weak we... and you couldn't take anything that someone put in your drink? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because you're a victim? Well, I didn't want to be one. Yeah, well, exactly. I didn't want to be the victim of a crime, it's, it's an almost, actual crime. It's almost as though <laughs> being a victim has nothing to do with you. It has to do with another's actions towards you. Mm-hmm. Weird. Or like... I wouldn't drink in public or I'd be with a very large group of friends and like wouldn't leave the table, wouldn't leave the group. Mm -hmm. Or we'd designate people to watch cups or you'd put your napkin over Mm -hmm. your drink because then you would know. Yeah, that's another one too that I tell you to do if you're at the bar and you have to go to the bathroom or whatever. Or you make sure the drink's gone before you go to the bathroom. Or you make sure it's gone before you go to the bathroom. And also like if someone were to buy you a drink, like you should make sure that it comes right from the bartender and not pass through the person's hands before yeah. it comes to you. It's a, it's a very complicated system. Yeah. But anyway, the, this idea that then you are now participating in a victim mentality because of actual real, real threats. Oh, right. That, because men do Instead this sort of, of thing. Instead of you being proactive because of actual real threats. Right. So th- this idea of a victim mentality, that, that somehow that's what's holding you back, That that's... It does not line up to reality at all. Mm-hmm. So let's hear more about how she thinks uh, or what she thinks a victim mentality is. Yeah, I'd love Feminists to hear. play into this victim narrative that women are victims of society, of the patriarchy, when we have so how much power. We? Okay, again, having power, being a victim, not mutually exclusive. I can, I think if, I can think of an actual good example of that one too. Um, oh boy, now I'm going to forget his name, but he was, he was that really muscly guy. He was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. God, now, now it's just on the tip of my tongue. Um, do you know who I'm talking about? Anyway. Andy Samberg? No, uh, Terry, I... Terry Crews. That's who it is. Uh, Terry Crews, you know, one of the, 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 you know, most muscular men on, on TV or whatever. Uh, no one would ever call him weak in, or, or, you know having a victim mentality in any way mm-hmm. and yet he was sexually assaulted by by someone in hollywood they they took advantage of their position to grope him um that's awful at that point he became a victim and it had nothing to do with how strong he was or how powerful he was it had everything to do with the imbalance of of of, of power within the room mm-hmm. that that someone thought that they could use their their loftier uh position to um take advantage to take advantage uh but that you know, no one is going to call him you know a a, a fake victim or no one's going to say that he is he's suffering from a victim mentality or that he's weak in any way mm-hmm. he can still be a strong person and you know what it, it took a lot of strength to come out and admit that publicly mm-hmm. knowing all the shame that especially a man has to go through uh if if they ever claim to be um, victimized sexually, because you know the knee jerk reaction is is to not believe them, and the knee jerk reaction is not to believe women either. But you know, mm-hmm. just in, in you know the idea that men are always in control, and that you know if anything ever happens, then it it is automatically their fault. No, that that's not the case. That he was a victim, and that doesn't take any way away anything from who he is and what he's capable of just as uh women who are victims of Mm -hmm. of lower expectations of of uh sexist people in positions of power above them Mm -hmm. who are taken advantage of in one way or another held back in one way or another even just passed over for a promotion because it's assumed that uh a male counterpart is is you know smarter yeah or stronger Less emotionally or, or, or more willful and you know really gonna be a go-getter in the position or whatever it is um i always find as a woman that emotions often play into it like yeah they don't want you to get emotional and it's like do you not realize that like aggression anger uh-huh. those things are emotions too so you know what so <laughs> so is fragility mm-hmm. you know so is uh, uh, having a super inflated ego that can't take any sort of criticism. 
Right. Which is often the case of, of men in power. Mm-hmm. So the idea that, yeah, somehow women are more emotional is just, just ridiculous. And it's so funny, too, because I think Terry that Bruce, kind yeah, of, yeah. like, brings it back around to, uh, like, I'm thinking back to, like, Brock Turner, right? Yeah. Like, they were so outraged. And they were concerned about his future. Right. Think about the what this is going to do future. to him. Are you kidding me? Think about what happened to that girl. Yeah, and, and is anyone going to say that that girl is not powerful? Because, you know, he, ex- exactly mm-hmm. what we were talking about, got her liquored up, took her away from the bar, and took advantage wait of until her she passed it out, passed out when she, I mean, power does not come and, to the point when you're passed out. Mm-hmm. It's not as though if she was a more powerful woman, she could have right. just powered through it. Right, and then you took it. her down. What is this, like Godzilla versus whatever? Like, no. come on. No, uh, And yet she was still... Literally, in the literal sense of the word, a victim. Mm-hmm. And that, t- that has nothing to do about her character, like, her power, her potential, her anything. They still talk about him now. Like, they still talk about Brock Turner now. Like, oh, he works in a warehouse in the back room because it's the only job he could get. He's very quiet and keeps to himself. I'm sure he was a really promising young man. Yeah, he was a, maybe he was a promising young man until he made some very bad decisions. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know. What about her? He, he, he I mean, in a certain sense, he, he suffered consequences because he didn't get to go on to the, the, the you know, privileged Ivy League path or whatever it was that he, that he was promised. Mm-hmm. At the same time, did he ever pay any sort of restitution to her or her family? Did he make things right in any way or, or make mm-hmm. her whole again? No. No. She just has to go back and, and deal with that for the rest of her life. And any time that story comes up, because, you know, this this happened while she was pretty young, mm-hmm. there's going to be people for the rest of her life who are going to remember that story. Right. She has to and be... And she's going to remember it, and yeah. it's going to impact every interaction that she has and it, with it, men now until forever. And you know what right. is a really interesting thing that I've seen in the past, and I think it plays true in this situation. You've got to think about trauma or incidences like a piece of china like a plate Mm -hmm. and you can smash that plate right and you can glue it back together but that plate is no longer the way it was at first so like oh no i'm sorry continue we'll we'll get to like yeah it's glued together Mm -hmm. and it basically looks the same but there's still a lot of cracks in it and it's not as strong as it used to be or maybe it's stronger than it used to be. But still, it's there's not damage the same. there. It's not the same. You know, it's been altered. You, you know, you'll be able to find out one way or another the history of, of what has happened to it and the effects that it may still have on, right. on that piece of China. That's a very Absolutely. It's a very good analogy. So we've got a question coming in. Uh, what's your idea of a fair punishment? Uh, I mean, for one thing, if we're at a point in society where that sort of thing happens, then there's already been a failure you know we've already failed to teach everybody about things like consent and about um other aspects of bodily autonomy and Mm -hmm. we've we've uh pumped you know ideas into to young men's and boys heads that you know, you can wear down a girl or you can somehow mm-hmm. trick her into oh, having sex. Just and, keep and, that, asking and that's okay. She that's says in yes. fact that's, you know, you playing the game right and you showing how, how smart you are. So already there's been the failure at that point. So it should never come to that in the first place. Mm-hmm. But in the idea of punishment, I mean, there is no punishment, punishment that's going to restore work. her. Right. The punishment is not gonna really make him change but his maybe mind. Maybe she gets to pick or, or, a or consequence. S- well, or they get to pick a consequence, whoever was on the receiving end. I think more than that, if, you know, if, if she was... Like within reason, right? Amenable to it. But, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a different road to go down um, than punishment at all. And that's, that, uh, that's the road of restorative justice, where uh, you know, they can take many forms, but basically both parties have to agree to it. And you confront the, your victimizer. They tell the truth absolutely about what happened they come clean and then together you work out a system where you can where they can restore you and make you whole as much as 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 possible Mm -hmm. and then you work towards that plan 
you know, failing that, if, if, if one party or the other didn't agree to restorative justice, well, you know, at that point, still punishment is not going to change anything. You need to then work towards rehabilitation. So, you know, getting him into some sort of a program that teaches him about consent. Uh, or forces him to teach other people about consent. That's a good way to show that you actually internalize a, a lesson is to, yeah, mm -hmm. have to teach someone else. So that, that would be a good... Right, so then too. maybe he goes around into local high schools so. and talks about, like, you need to make sure that when you are about to engage in any sort of activity, that when you ask the other person, you know, may I kiss you or whatever, mm -hmm. that that answer is a clear, concise yes. Well, and an, an enthusiastic yes, And nothing yes other too. than that. Right. One that's not like, uh, yeah, okay, okay or yeah. I'm not sure, but do whatever but like yes yes let's do that right mm -hmm. and if there's any apprehension at all any hesitation mm -hmm. then you take it as a no and you don't bring it up again at least in that day's interaction yeah you don't you don't keep pushing it because right. the idea is that wearing someone down you know just keep on nagging and nagging mm -hmm. and nagging that that's that's just like, getting past consent that, how that's, can that like be fun when you've pestered someone into doing something that they don't want to do uh, and their heart's not really in it or their you know mind's not really in it they're just not feeling it like how fun can that be un unfortunately there's there's a lot of of messages within the culture especially i mean look at the romantic comedy how often is it the trope where the man just keeps on like showing up at the girl's place of work, mm -hmm. asking her out again and again, and oh, it's right. funny. And she's you like, know. oh yeah, she told you no like seven hundred times, right? And, you and, don't and get obviously, it. sexual assault and, and these sorts of things are much more egregious than that. But still, right. that's kind of the doorway into that sort of mentality where right. you don't have she's to accept saying no. no, but she re what she really means is yes. She just doesn't yeah. know it yet, right? Or like, I just have to say the right to thing to her. unlock her you know, guard to, to get her guard. Yeah, like down. what do we chastity belt? No. Like yeah. <laughs> only you have the key. But yeah, un <laughs> unfortunately men are, are taught these sorts of things, uh, you know, either actively by by uh older people or, or their peers, you know, unfortunately mm -hmm. learning it from their peers who don't know anything. Uh or they're they're getting it from messages in movies or or like, you know, this is stuff kids should learn at school. TV shows, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Like, this is not what my sex ed looked like at no. school anyway. And it really should be at the core of sex ed. This should be the number one thing they teach kids. I mean, you talk about, like, that as a child, like, kindergartners mm -hmm. talk about, like, you know, oh, do you want, like, pre-COVID, do you want a hug? Do you want a fist bump? Uh -huh. Do you want an elbow bump? Or do you just want to stay, just what wave. do you want to keep your distance yeah. and wave? Yeah. Like all of these greetings right. are a valid choice. Right. And like, I mean, I've worked in a couple classrooms where it's like the kindergartners ask if they can hug each other. Which is and great. And if the other person says no, then the other kid will be like, okay, well you let me know if you want a hug later and I can give you a hug if I'm ready. That's then, perfect. Okay. It doesn't have to be. Away. Like if a kindergartner understands this, I don't understand how an adult yeah. doesn't understand this or they're just so completely yeah, well, immersed in their own needs that there just is no sense of reason anymore and it's just gone. I mean, for one thing, I don't think every kindergartner was taught this. I was never taught any of that sort of thing when I was uh, in kindergarten. See, I got that at home. Like if you That's don't want to give a hug... That's okay. You That's can good. say, I don't feel like hugging right now. I'll give you a hug later. That's good. But um, there's still a lot of people that, that have the mentality mm -hmm. that, well, no, this is your elder. You need to show respect. And right. you know, the proper way to show respect is to give them physical affection. Mm -hmm. And and I understand where they're coming from. They, they're, they're wanting to give respect. And it can be an awkward thing yeah. if, for whatever reason, your kid just being a little shit that day and just <laughs> wants to be rude to everybody. Right. But at the same time... What you're doing is you're setting a precedent that, you know, if these certain conditions are met, then consent does not need to be gained. Right. You have to do things. You have to touch other people, even if it's in a very benign way, mm -hmm. you know, whether yeah. or not you feel like it. It's, it's sad. And that just kind of sets you down this path that, that can obviously lead to very bad things. And instead, mm -hmm. if you're teaching kindergartners, like you say, 
It starts with with a hug. Can I give you a high five? Any of these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. If you want to touch somebody or talk to somebody or anything. Or like, hey, do you want to play together? No, I don't feel like playing right now. Do you want to take turns at the ball? No, I don't want to take turns at the ball. Okay. And then you walk away. I mean, heck, I've even seen it like, I have a nephew and he's like a little skittish. And my sister oftentimes will try to like push him for the hug. I'm like, if he's not ready, that's okay. But nine times out of ten... When it's like our time to leave or something mm-hmm. like that, he will come over and willingly give a really big hug and a kiss. And it's so sweet because it was like on his terms. For sure. Like he chose to do it. It wasn't like, you see your aunt and uncle, you need to go give him a kiss right now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so yeah. And and I think a- another benefit of starting kids young with, with this idea of, of bodily autonomy and consent is that... It, it, it loses the stigma if then the other person says no. Because that's another aspect of all of this is there's there's the hurt feelings and then the rage and the I'm going to make you pay mm-hmm. if you don't. And, you know, that can happen with, with things like sexual assault and, and, and someone turning you down for a date. Right. That, that, that often is... is uh, th- and that's a scary thing. Like, Absolutely. Woman, there's been people that I've gone out with like, one time, like obviously pre Zach, right? Went out with him one time. And after that, he felt nothing but entitlement. It was like, well, we went out one time and I thought we were having a nice time. So, I mean, I don't understand why you would have any reason not right. to want to go out with me again. And it's like, well, I was uncomfortable. And, and see, he's coming and from like, that. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, just like that entitled, like, well, you owe it to me. It's a very like, transactional thing in that in that mindset. Right. And that that's part of this idea of... I can get what I want if I just, you know, put the right coin in the machine and then, and then I get back the, the, the reward that I'm seeking, mm-hmm. you know. And then, yeah, then it becomes I deserve this or I put so much effort into this this date or this right. relationship or whatever. You owe this to me. Instead of if you've had a history like, of people saying, I don't really feel like it and you just like, being like, thanks, but no thanks. Okay, I don't and feel then walk any away chemistry and, in person, but it was nice to meet you. Right, right. And if, you, if, if that instead is your history, then you're going to be much less, less likely to, to even have those hurt feelings as much. You just understand that's another person who a connection didn't work out and that's fine. And that like, says why nothing would you about you as a person. And force it again anyway well, because I mean, like, that's, that's, that's that not going to be sincere. It's not right. going to be good. Like, it's much better when it's like, I like you. You like me? Great. Well, yeah. Let's let's go out again. Absolutely. Let's hang out. Let's who, do who something. Who wants to force people to be their friend or to be around them? That just, that seems really just icky and, and yeah. I wouldn't it's not want fun. that. I wouldn't want that either. No. Well, let's continue on with, with oh. more pearls and wisdom. Oh. No, I know this is going to be a slog, isn't it? We're only two minutes in. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> This was the reason I made a video about a year ago about Taylor Swift's song, The Man, her music video on The Man, which again, plays into all of these stereotypes that women are weak and that men can do whatever they want and that women are weak because society has made them that way. Absolutely the opposite message is, 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 I I mean, I haven't seen that video, but I can guarantee you that she's going for the opposite message. Mm Mm-hmm. Am, am I right? Have you seen that video? I haven't, actually. Okay, well, that, that'll be another one we can look up. But I, I guarantee you, if you look up that video, it's not going to be the idea that women are weak and men can do whatever they want. And that's... Mm-hmm. Wait, that's somehow feminist? Like, is she just saying because Taylor Swift calls her... I mean, does Taylor yeah. Swift even call herself a feminist? I don't even know. No, I don't think but she does. I'm not making the connection between that and feminism. Because feminism says the opposite. It says... I can do what I want with my body. Men may think they can do what they want. They may, you know, according to societal standards, be able to get away with doing a lot of the things that they want, you know, Mm -hmm. almost anything they want to. uh, But that's not right. I seriously doubt the message was, this is how things are, and that's being a feminist. (laughs) Yeah. You gotta like, wonder what kind of goggles she like looks at these things through. Whatever ones fit at that particular moment. I mean, yeah, I'm like going off 
in my head, but I don't want to like go off yet in case this isn't the right point. Oh, okay. Well, let's, <laughs> let's see if we can get to that, that right point. <laughs> yeah. No. Women are very strong. And I'm really... The message of feminism. I'm excited okay. to talk about this today because it's a really important idea. And I think it gives women an opportunity to feel more fulfilled and feel happier than constantly feeling like a victim, which will only... Make okay. Feminism wants women to be happier. Feminism wants women to be uh, more fulfilled. You know, that, that's part of having equal opportunity to, to advance in your career, if that's something you're after. Uh, uh, having feminine in your relationships, you know, that's definitely something that feminism is about. I, I don't understand where she gets her definitions from, because she never actually, throughout this whole thing, she I... never pulls up a source and says, this is feminism, and here it is in black and white, and there's no, it's, you know... I think she just thinks women are strong because women can carry and birth children. Well, I think that's that actually is I where she goes with this, if I, if I recall and right. There, why don't we just open that Pandora's box right now? So, like, I, I, as a woman who cannot have children, am I less valuable? Are we living the Handmaid's Tale already? Or women I, should I watch not to out? Have children. Should I watch out? Am yeah. I in trouble? Like... That's not all it's for. That's not the only point of it. No. And, and, and if you center all of women's power on... Your vagina. A womb, which... Newsflash, not all women have wombs. Right. Uh, uh, and that, that, you know... Oh, but we don't want to talk about those kind of women, because those, you know, that's well, a whole... Also, women who have had uh, uh, hysterectomies. Yeah. Women who are past childbearing age. Are they just cast aside if they have not reproduced at mm -hmm. that point? Right. Should they be? Is that is that the sort of feminism that Abby wants that to? that sounds gross. That sounds Absolutely. militant and awful. Again, it, it sounds like very... Uh, and like, what about trans Objectifying. What about trans women? <laughs> So I'm so glad you whispered that so that no one heard well, it and was she offended. Would, she would get upset. I just, I know, you know, she's sensitive but strong. Yeah, sensitive but strong. That's, yeah, S&S. And S. <laughs> Make you just made that one myself. Really? So, wow. I'm really excited to get into today's video. Sure I hope you are. you are too. Let's get into it. <laughs> So let's talk about feminism briefly. Feminism is a very good example of the term semantic overload. If you don't know, semantic overload means when a term acquires multiple meanings and is used in a purposefully vague way, so you're not sure which meaning is being used at Could this be any more ironic at this point? I mean, I was glad I was sitting down for it because the irony might have given me a heart attack. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure what she's about to follow this up with is a very clear and concrete definition of, of the only way that you are able to view feminism, or at least the way that she views right. feminism. Absolutely. Let, let's, let's listen on to see. At what time? The left is great at using words and phrases like this, and they put people on the spot by using them. But feminism is a great, great example of this. Feminism had three waves. Some people think there's a fourth wave it now. Definitely is. And each wave Spoiler. was defined by different things. Now, the first wave. In fact, the, the, the fourth wave feminism came in the, the late aughts and early tens of, of this century. So you'd think that, I know she's conservative, it takes a while for ideas to get to her. But well, yeah, because she's trying to save the old world that but there clearly definitely works is so well. A, a, a fourth wave. Um, and before she gets into what the fourth wave is, maybe we should look it up. Wait, let's get into it. Oh, see, she didn't do her little butt pucker sound. <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm so disappointed. I, I look for that butt pucker noise. I'll too. do it. <laughs> yeah, she's she's twenty. Oh, Abby hey. Shapiro is almost thirty. I think she is thirty at this point. Hang on, let's look it up. Let's look up Abby Shapiro and, and her age. I'm Abby, pretty sure. Abby, how old are you? Abby. Oh, I'm not going to finish that. Haha. <laughs> I win. Wow. No, I don't yet. You actually. win the race. Uh, she was born in 94. She was born in 2000. Wait, no. What? How are you finding Oh, such... just kidding. She, She's 28. Yeah, she's 20. She's almost 30. This woman is almost 30, by the way. But when you live... But yeah, she does... She, she, I mean, I can definitely see how someone would be confused and think she is 
fresh out of college. So fresh faced, so youthful. But before she gets into her uh, wacky, what? Let's get into it. <laughs> are you, you going to do that for every little segment every, now? I mean, I might have to. I, I guess she's dropped the ball, so someone's got to pick it up. Yeah. I mean, come Let's on. Let's look at what fourth wave feminism. We'll just we start all with thrive the, off the, the basic wiki, Wikipedia definition. Wiki, how about that? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a feminist movement that began around 2012 and is characterized by a focus on empowerment of women. Isn't that what Abby was just talking about as not feminism? Weird. The use of internet tools, so like internet activism, you we know, are for strong. better or worse, and intersectionality. And, and before people come up with some crazy definitions of intersectionality, that's the idea that, that, you know, people that are oppressed in one way need to find solidarity with people that are also impressed, oppre- not impressed, but oppressed by the same sorts of systems. So if you are ladies a woman, you should find solidarity with people. Or if, as is, I should say, if you're just a, a white, cis, straight woman, you should find intersectionality with... Uh, gay women but also with uh straight women of color and mm-hmm. and men of color uh, you know these different uh minority characterizations or, or or categories all have the common intersection of being oppressed by things like a patriarchal society mm-hmm. that wants strict gender roles strict gender definitions get in the kitchen and make me a sandwich exactly very heteronormative meaning that we we look at the you know father knows best system you of are getting nuclear. the job karen i'm the breadwinner in this house exactly this sort of thing you're making more money than me you better go work at mcdonald's you're gonna need to take a pay cut so i don't feel like less of a man <laughs> That's a very good uh, one-act play that you've put on about what uh, the patriarchy is. But yes, it's it's the idea that, that we have to have these strict roles, or society don't, breaks don't down talk into chaos. Over me. I'm the man of this house now. And and believe it or not, it's a, it's a very recent phenomenon. This idea of a a nuclear family in the first place. It's it's something that's only really come mm-hmm. along with the advent of the industrial. A family only has okay, a mommy you... and a daddy and two kids and they all live together. One boy, one girl with separate bedrooms. Mommy and daddy have two beds because they don't sleep in the same bed together. That's just nonsense. That's nasty. <laughs> I'm glad I feel oh. I feel like I have a living soundboard right next to me that I don't even have to press the buttons of. You know, they just they play the clips from the made up 50s TV show. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, the nuclear family. This idea that that there's the the one man and the one woman and the, the you know two point four children, and and they all live in the suburbs. And the dad goes to the factory where he works his way up to corporate manager, and and you know, and and all of these sorts of tropes. This is a very recent institution, uh, and an even more traditional, if you want to even call it that, system. The system that came before that was the extended family, where you had uh, people wouldn't necessarily leave their their parents' household. One or the, if they got married, mm-hmm. one or the other or, spouse like, would move in with with their parents. Or and, the in laws come and move in. Or, like or a they lot come in and move with you. Where right. the extended right. family you have an extended comes family thing, and you may have aunts and everyone. uncles, yeah. and everyone kind of raises the kids together. It's right. not just you go back to your mom's house and your cousin goes back to her mom's house. They just right. kind of all are in the same village, if yeah. you will, or the same neighborhood, and everyone just kind it of takes watches everyone. A village to raise kids, it really does. There's all sorts of people in your kid's life. That's true. I mean, that literally is Sometimes true. Sometimes your kids are closer to their teacher than they are to you. But anyway, this, this <laughs> idea that these conservatives hold up of this 1950s, these 1950s you know, traditionalist household is, is itself relatively new. Trad rolls. And, and imposed largely by industrialization. Okay, we get more comments. comments. Yeah. Oh, wait. Different Abby Shapiro showed up when I Googled it. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Oh man, there's more than one. I mean, chances are she's this other Abby Shapiro is not nearly as bad as as this one. Or... She's probably cool. Did you guys know that Abby Shapiro is related to the girl from Matilda, the movie? No, I, I never saw that movie. So they really, but they're not friends. They don't. They don't speak. She's not into this conservative lifestyle. Sorry. So just... weird that she wouldn't seek out those alternative voices. That's because she's kind of gay. 
<laughs> oh, Matilda, the Matilda characters? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's why. Yeah. Oh, so she doesn't fit her traditional... She doesn't fit the trad wife role. And ladies, let me just take a moment to explain to you how important it is to be a trad wife. Yeah. Like... So important. So important. You know... In, in, this, in, in this society where... If you don't have you a have personality, have... you're a lot easier to, like, keep down. So, like, if you could just keep that personality to your damn self... Well, right, and... The world would be a better place. And if you'd work... Less on your personality and more on making those sandwiches. Maybe your husband would be happier. Oh, my God. Yeah. And in, in a society where it's nearly impossible for both uh, members of, of any sort of a marriage to not be working. I mean, they, they, you have to have both people working. Let's just continue with the old gender roles of, of then one of them having to do all the dishes and one of them having to fix the cars and, you know, but really one person does the bulk of the, the homework as well as has to go out and get a job for themselves as well. That sounds like a real winning combo. That's not going to cause tension at all, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the setup I've been dreaming of and I just, yeah. I know, yeah. I'm so disappointed. Yeah, I'm sure you're disappointed that you can't just sit home and clean all day and yeah. do dishes and do the shopping and I'm so disappointed. balance the checkbooks. Yeah, I mean... That I'm okay, employed. I think we've carried this meme about as much as we can. I don't know. I think we could carry it more. So anyway, intersectionality and interlocking systems of power are emphasized and how these contribute to the social stratification of traditionally marginalized groups, such as women of color and trans women. Fourth wave feminists advocate, like earlier feminists, for greater representation of these groups in politics and business. And at this point, this is where the, the liberals just kind of turn their brain off because, like, if you have the right people in the right place, well, then the system is working just fine. You know, more, you know, trans drone operators bombing poor countries and stuff like that. They're, they're totally good leaving it at that and not having to worry about any sort of other systemic inequality. But I digress. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, an argue society would be better or would be more equitable if policies and practices incorporated the perspectives of all people. How about that? More ideas equals a better society. Yeah. That almost sounds like the, the idea of the, uh, the American melting pot where people from different cultures come in and contribute their own unique perspectives and knowledges to enrich the country that they are coming to. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Weird that. Hey, let's rewind a moment when we're talking about people and having balanced, equitable situations. Fun little fact about the 117th U.S. Congress membership. I'd just like to share with you that in the House of Representatives, 27% are women. And in the Senate... 24%. 24% 24%. 24% of the senators are actually women at this yep. point. At this point. I mean, that's, that's, so, a, that's a big leap from the last time that I looked up those mm, numbers. But Let's see how many... See how many of them are any sort of other minority, though. Hang on. Let's... That's silly. What, what are you looking okay, at Okay, so now? there's 99.58... What are you looking at I'm looking at the ratio of men to women in the United States, and it's not coming. It's complicated. Oh, just, Sorry, you want me to you, look you, up minorities you, in Congress? Yeah, do that. And um, you can be pretty safe to bet that pretty much everywhere in the world... That's probably going to be less than 20%. Oh, it's, it's almost certainly going to be less than 20%. It's not going to be anywhere near the proportion of, of people that are uh, non-white people. So, in this country. But anyway, you can, be, you can be safe in assuming that about 50%... 46... Hold on. Oh. 50%, I just want to get this out before you got into that. 50% of, of any population is going to be men, and 50% is going to be women. That's just basically how the human race shakes out. So only half representation in proportion to the number of, of women in the country. Continue, right. please. Half of half, which is a quarter. No, I, I mean, ha, ha, okay, half of the proportion. I, <laughs> you are confusing statistics that don't need to be confused. Ha, <laughs> Fifty percent, but only half are represented. You have only yeah. half of that represented in Congress. Right. Go ahead. So a quarter. All right. Thanks. A quarter <laughs> when it should be a half. He gets upset when I talk about math. All right. So well, let's I don't talk like about math. But at least I understand that math. Go ahead. 
What is half of half? 25%, but you're Which making is it unnecessarily quarter. complicated. It's not unnecessarily complicated. The point half is they only have that, half the representation right. that they should yes, if they look because, like the makeup of the United right. States. It should technically be 50-50, which is not right. our reality. But women aren't depressed. Speaking of things that aren't depressed, like minorities, yeah. like women. So 46% are Hispanic. 17% what are, are looking at Asian. Here? This is the general and makeup. 6% of... are Native American of Congress. Okay, hold on now. Let me I, see that. <laughs> I'm not understanding what you're see, saying. See, this is funny. This is this is feminism for your men always questioning you. I don't un- I want to understand your what you're saying. Ability to read. I don't think you can handle it. I can handle it. I can read and do math. Oh, see, but this is just talking about of the people that are black, Hispanic, Asian, and Native American. That's not talking about the whole... That's not the percentage of the whole of Congress. That's just the breakdown of people of color in Congress. Well, uh, all right. Did you want actual numbers? Because we could, we could yes. do math. I, I was, what I was going to ask is, is, like, especially look at the Senate, how many people of color are there in the Senate? There's, there's I think, like less than 10 at this point. Well, I'm working on it. Okay. That's fine. I'll I'll continue on with the the definition of fourth wave feminism. Uh, So fourth wave feminism argues for equal pay for equal work. Seems pretty self-explanatory. And equal opportunities sought for girls and women should extend also to boys and men to overcome gender norms. For example, expressing emotions and feelings freely, expressing themselves physically as they wish, and to be engaged parents to their children. Hmm. Interesting that feminism is also trying to work for uh, uh, getting rid of oppressive stereotypes of men. Like that they can't share, they can't show certain emotions. They right. can't be loving parents. They have to be aloof. They have to be disconnected from their right. children or it's weird. You know, they're trying to get rid of those norms too. Right. So that people can just be free to express themselves as they naturally do. Which is funny, too, because when you think about, like, people getting divorced and stuff, like, favoritism always goes to the mother, even though that may not always be the I've best heard that's option. actually changing at this point and that it's coming a lot closer towards parenting. Well, that's great but... to hear. I was just, I was yeah. something worth noting. But yeah, that definitely would be an example of something that feminism would, would speak out against, that you shouldn't just automatically give custody to one parent or the other that, that the, all the facts and, and all the situations it's beneficial be, for both parents to be part of right. their lives especially that, that, since that they were used to both parents for. unless that should be the default right one is a serial killer then maybe it's time <laughs> to take a break maybe that parent probably shouldn't be out in the general public at that point but hey maybe that person <laughs> stays somewhere special uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> like not at home yeah or or yeah Cool. Anyway, the utilization of print news and social media platforms to collaborate, mobilize, speak against abusers of power in seeking for the empowerment of women and seeking justice against assault and harassment is prominent. It's the idea of of believing women, the the Me Too movement, all these sorts of things. These are all parts of of fourth wave feminism. Mm -hmm. None of which Abby talks about. Like, I don't think she mentions any of this stuff. Because they're scary to her. It doesn't fit her dread. I don't when, think she even understands that. When you're a trad wife, it's hard to understand a lot of things because your mind is so full of so, thoughts about being a mommy and making sure the home is perfect. And the world outside your, your kitchen is just so big and bright. It's, it's and going to, to church and talking to God. and <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, that, that's wrong. There's it's a real bad people stereotype. with real feelings. Right. And that She's okay a real if person. She has had trust. feelings. There's documentation on the internet. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And, and no one should attack her for those feelings or nope. those situations. Okay. Was a good wave. The first wave of feminism was about getting legal so, equity so for women. Wave. So very famously, we got voting rights in the first wave of feminism. Fun fact, folks. Women have only been allowed to vote for just over 100 years. And that's not even entirely true, because though she says and women got the right to vote, white women got the right to vote. Right. Black women didn't get to vote f- until They didn't get full years. enfranchisement until the, the, 50 the, years the, the ago. Civil Rights era. Yeah. 50 years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. about 50 years ago. That's right. Uh-huh. More math for you. Mm-hmm. It's hard, okay? Yeah, I know. 
That's why I do it. But the second wave of feminism and the third wave of feminism started changing what feminism meant. It wasn't about being made equal to men anymore and getting equal Yes, it was. rights. It was about a lot of different things. And a lot of them are paradoxical to each other. So we think about the idea that feminism, it means sex positivity, that we shouldn't slut shame people. True. But then we also get the idea that it's sex <laughs> negativity, that engaging in sex with men is actually a bad thing because we're allowing men to take advantage of us. Only if you're being taken advantage Wait, of. Wait, <laughs> so it's not okay for men to take advantage of you because you're a slut? There's <laughs> what she would refer to as a slut. Yeah, weird. But it's, it's your fault if you get raped? <laughs> I'm really confused. Well, I don't know if she said it's your fault if you get raped. Well, I'm, it's coming. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're, you're getting a Spoilers. little ahead of, of the video. We don't want to have the big reveal yet. Oh, trust me, that's not the big reveal. <laughs> So, so yeah, weird how people should be able to have sex with whoever they want, but should not be taken advantage of. And it's so funny because... It's almost like she's missing a keystone to all of that. You what know, could that possibly be? That's probably why her building is crumbling. Wow. There's, there's some, deep, <laughs> some deep metaphorical yeah. stuff there. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, like, what I was getting at was I think the key that she's missing is consent and bodily autonomy mm -hmm. so all that stuff's fine as long as you consent and no one's violating your bodily autonomy right and i don't think anyone would say anything different even even you know people that that call themselves feminist so i think the birds explain it best the birds explain it best becky oh we're not gonna watch that's that. cons that's consent that's a video for we're it. not gonna watch that because that has an r slur in it i looked at it recently oh and we can't show Okay. That. All right. Because it has not aged well either. But. Anyway. Us and use their oppressive nature in a sexual manner. It can mean equality in the workplace. It can also mean that women must have equality in the workplace, despite the fact that many women do not want to get to the heights of their. Are you kidding me? So Are you kidding me? So, so I just go to work for the hell of it. I don't actually aspire to any well, more than beyond just, having a job wanna, because I have too many wanna, things to do at home. Yeah, most of them just want to just be back home, but they, they got to be in the workplace. That was an excellent stopping point, by the way. I mean, yeah, it's, it's basically Abby's stoner philosophy. Uh, women don't want to get promoted. Uh. This, this is the idea. It's, it's, it's similar to the idea of reverse racism, but it's just reverse sexism. The idea yeah. that people are getting promoted just because they're a woman and that's not how it is what if the woman has more education what if the woman has taken mm -hmm. like i work in education i have to get like ceus what if she gets like ceus and stuff and has more than someone else so she spent more time outside of work trying to grow and expand her mind yeah what well, i'm sure most people can can think of a situation where they've had a job where <laughs> Regardless of who are or managers, what 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 gender they are, um, you know, whatever, the people that that they end up promoting has has very little to do with anything other than you know who they like or who they're related to, who they're giving a favor to, you know. There's there's all these other sorts of factors that have nothing to do with merit. So so the idea that that <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but but basically, um, yeah. What? I have a hiccup. Oh, you got a hiccup. I thought you were chuckling. No. Anyway, the so so yeah. Places are already not meritocracies by a long stretch. By a long stretch, um, you know, I've, I've had plenty of jobs where like the owner's son happened mm -hmm. to be my boss, or you know, the owner's. Uh, best friend is, ends up being the co-owner mm -hmm. not because of any sort of merit right just because of who they know so 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 all that that feminism wants is is equal opportunity for that right. and you know we could even get into the the idea of workplaces being inherently structurally unequal mm -hmm. and um, the idea that anyone gets to just be an authoritarian because they happen to have the capital to start a business or be in the right place at the right time to inherit a business or whatever it is, is just on its face unfair. And mm -hmm. 
that workers should have a whole lot more say in, in their workplace, regardless of their position, even an equal say, mm-hmm. you know, what, what's wrong with having democracy in the workplace? But I mean, th- yeah. that's far beyond the scope of even what she's talking about right now. Yeah. But I wouldn't see that being in any way opposed to uh, by feminists, the, the, this sort of idea of, of having democracy, you know, equal, equal say, equal opportunity, all that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But anyway careers and actually choose to leave high-powered jobs in order to stay at home and have families. That is a choice many women make, and feminism doesn't Pause. care. Sorry, I didn't realize that many women made the choice to go home and stay and raise children. Not that they weren't forced into staying home to raise the children because the cost of daycare would eat well, up their entire income. That's Again, a good point. that's... Not necessarily them choosing that, because I know plenty of women that were plenty eager to get back into the workplace after having kids, which is an absolutely valid choice, by the way, because you should get to feel like you're still a human being, individual person, even though you've had children. Right. You can get to enjoy both. Right. And, and what actual feminism says is you should have the choice. There's that... There's that concept again the idea of choice um and and being able to do what you feel you want to do Uh, Mm -hmm. so if you want to if you really just want to stay at home and and be a stay-at-home mom you should have that option you should martha stewart the living daylights out of your life if that's what you want there's not there's not a single feminist worth paying attention to that would say anything otherwise that women should have the choice but they should also have the choice to have children and also a career, just yeah. as men can have children and have a career. And that might be more career. the reason for women to want to advance in their career so that they're able to afford daycare and they're yeah. able to afford what to them might seem like a luxury time of being away from their children, yeah. feeling like an adult again and not being covered in spit up. Well, again, and, and again, we, we bump into the, the, the problems of the system, which, which is... Uh, how capitalism imposes itself on everyday society. And that's the idea that <clears throat> in, instead of having any sort of free labor, instead of, instead of anything being provided for people to support them, uh, you got to pay for stuff like childcare. Mm. And, and if you, if you don't, you're, you're going to hurt yourself financially. I mean, you hurt yourself either way, either you're shelling out to a daycare or you're foregoing work and you can't choose one or the other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, be anything but scrambling to make ends meet. Which is sad. Cases. Which is sad. Yeah. Instead, if we wanted an equitable society, we would be giving that extra support to people that choose to have families mm-hmm. or choose to have other people to, to support in their lives um, so that they can be free to actually make a real choice. You know, I talk about this a lot, the idea that you can't really call something a choice if there's no meaningful alternative. Like... Someone, someone running up to you on the street with a gun and saying your money or your life, that's not, that's not a choice. You're not choosing then to give up your money. You are being coerced into it. Right. Just as having to, to go to work just to survive, that's not exactly a choice. You have to do it. You have to do that or you, you end up on the street and, and, you know, at the very least, probably dying earlier than you otherwise would because mm-hmm. of... Lack of health care, lack of shelter. I mean, all these things are really hard on, on people. So if there's no meaningful alternative, there's no real choice. Mm-hmm. So if you want to support women and their right to choose whether or not they have a career, you should be looking to support, uh, you know, pre-K, you know, uh, subsidized by the government at the very least, if not just mm-hmm. informal networks of, of people that all just help each other out, raising kids together and that sort of thing, so that people there's, are free to make that choice. There's actually a bill on the floor right now that it's supposed to be free public education ages three and up, which that's which great. Be huge. But when you think about early child care education, mm-hmm. have okay, having worked in daycare myself, I can tell you that that newborn toddler... That is the most you will pay for childcare because right. they're higher risk, they're higher insurance. However, daycare makes a ton of money off of your brand new baby. Oh, absolutely. Like a lot, a like, lot. I mean, they have to get special certifications and stuff, but yeah, the, the money that they pull in is, is so much more. Yeah, it's crazy. 
But yeah, so again, that 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 that's a great step forward. That would certainly bring a lot of people out of that situation where they had no meaningful choices. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, that's still three years that for a lot of people, they can't just give up you right. know, working. And those are critical years, those first three mm-hmm. years. So it's like if you wanted to be home with your child, that's really sad. Yeah. If you couldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Or if you wanted to so, get away from your kid. So it's what, sad what, that you couldn't. What then is, is how can we promote feminism? How can we give uh, women in particular, but everybody, more of a choice Free in order care. to... Free care, sure, but also to twelve. But but I mean that's that's definitely one way to do it. But then also just give people financial support to be able to be stay at home parents for the first three years until that kid gets old enough to 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 go to a higher level cared for daycare. This is where UBI comes in. Yeah, stuff like stuff like UBI However, without taking away the other benefits that people are getting. No, not the way that Yang wants to do it. Definitely not. He's he's been it's very a different much way. a disappointment lately talking about getting rid of other social Breaks programs in order heart. to fund UBI. I was, right. So. He would get rid of disability and all sorts of other things and I don't think people that are disabled choose to be disabled. I genuinely the majority wouldn't. Yeah. Have well, chosen that life for themselves, even, even though they if, have grown would, accustomed to it. If they've yeah. not known anything else, it's usually not someone's first pick. But but no matter or not whether it doesn't really even matter if they choose to. That mm-hmm. is their situation, and so if we as a society really view, care uh, human worth, then then we should be supporting people with with equitable treatment, meaning that people that need more assistance get more assistance. However, that comes to them, whether it's through the government whether it's through just community networks of, of, of neighbors supporting neighbors, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. If that's what we value, then that's what we should be doing. Right. Show it. So so to me, that that is the feminist alternative to the current system. Mm-hmm. Let's listen to Abigail for a few more. Yeah, it looks like she's having trouble following along to her own conversation. That's all right. That that is the case. They'll still say that women are not making the same amount of men, that they're making 78 cents on the dollar or whatever whatever figure is, Let's is look at statistics. in play today. One thing about that statistic is there's a lot of stuff that's hit that they hide within those statistics, such as we value certain professions a lot more than others as a society so you know high-priced uh, stockbroker or or, or um, ceo of a company or you know all these other very high-powered jobs that are very well compensated uh tend to go to men whereas the jobs that that uh you see a lot of women in for for better or worse right or wrong things like education home care health care daycare care of other people for some reason we just don't value those jobs very much so Mm -hmm. they end up not paying as well so that is also a dimension of the pay gap it's not just you know you know a man and a woman do the same exact job but one gets paid more which also does happen it's also Mm -hmm. uh the the jobs that men and women Take. Find themselves in, or get mm-hmm. pushed into, or for whatever reason end up in. Because care jobs don't pay that well. Right. They 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 end they end up getting paid less if it's skill, if it's a job that, that low, women tend though. to be put into, or, or or get guided to, or just end up choosing, and and more if it's it's one that a man does. So that that's a part of the pay gap that she, I'm sure doesn't even comprehend, but is definitely yeah. never going to address. So, as of 2020, the Women make 98 cents for every dollar men make. Mm-hmm. And that may seem like nothing, but, you know, every dollar, that's a little bit more that they're slipping behind. It's like when kids have to do those problems with the alligator or the equal sign. Oh, oh the yeah. greater than the less than? Yeah. Which one's Is the alligator 98? eating? Yeah. Alligator's hungry. He's going to eat the bigger one. So that's, I don't think you're going to be eating 98 cents anytime oh soon. That, that's that's a flashback. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> that's it's the gift that keeps on giving. Just like Abby. <laughs> Shall we continue? <laughs> oh, yes. She's, she has no shortage of, of super big brain takes. I love Matilda too, Jelly Moon. <laughs> I, I, don't, I think I should probably see that movie at this yeah, point. Yeah, you should, because it's going to come up a lot. Yeah? Okay. 
Being feminist can mean being pro-choice and that if you're pro-life, you have internalized misogyny. I mean, you don't want bodily autonomy, so you want to tell other women what they can and cannot do with their bodies. That doesn't mm -hmm. sound very... Because you can choose not to have an abortion if you don't want one. Mm -hmm. Who are you to say that you should have to have a back alley abortion because you're Miss Uppity and don't think it's acceptable? Right. Since when does your religious point of view, and it is a religious point of view that leads her down this path, when is your religion and my religion the same? I can guarantee you they're not. Because one of us has it and the other one doesn't. So, uh -uh. you know. It's kind of salty today. Sorry, guys. So yeah, you may, you may have she's she's right. You may have internalized misogyny if you are a a quote unquote pro life, which is really just pro birth. Let's be honest. They don't yeah, give a don't damn care. what happens to the, the right. child after they come out of their mother. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, it can mean that you believe that there's an inherent victimization of women by society and the patriarchy. There can be. <laughs> I mean, just because you put air quotes and, and, and seem incredulous about it, that's not an argument. Like, you can look at virtually any metric. There are systemic barriers for women. You look at the STEM field. There's, there's it's too many anecdotes to just call it anecdotal evidence. But I've got confidence and I speak with confidence. Yeah. So clearly everything I say is right. <laughs> I don't remember what that's from, but that, that triggered something in my brain. <laughs> anyway, uh, just, just the idea that the women are discouraged from STEM, even if they're already in the program, they, they don't get treated as, as seriously as their male counterparts. Mm -hmm. They don't get the same, um, you know, research project assignments or, or, or uh, research positions. Mm -hmm. um, they don't get the same internships. Nope. They don't get the same letters of recommendation. They're inherently seen as, as uh, more emotional, less yeah. logical, which, boy, oh boy. And you know what? I think that's really fascinating because, okay, fun fact. Perennial Green was an art major in college. I know you're surprised. This is Perennial Green if you haven't caught on. She so. does her own channel sometimes about uh, houseplants, which is a really great channel. Yeah, but it's been a while, so maybe I should do something this week. Anyway. Yeah. Um, it's really funny because toward the end, when I was about to graduate in 2012, there were a lot more like med students popping up in my classes. And when I asked one one day, like, why there's so many like pre-med students that are in my classes now hmm. and like other like scientific type students and... The U of M had recently taken initiative saying that people in the medical industry tend to be really cold and not empathetic or sympathetic to their patients. And so they were forcing them to take art type classes or creative type classes to kind of get them more in tune with those things to help them become better doctors in the field. Because it isn't all about like diagnosing someone correctly or treating them correctly. Right. It's about connecting with them and getting them to trust you. Yeah. To do treatments right. and to believe you when you're given a diagnosis. Right. People, people are not just numbers on a spreadsheet. They're living, breathing things. They have fears. They have weaknesses. And, you know, there's there's plenty. I mean, just, just mm -hmm. look at the placebo effect. There's plenty of evidence that just having more confidence that you're going to get better mm -hmm. makes a big difference on whether or not you get better and whatever whatever ailment it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, connecting with your patients on an emotional level seems to be I mean, a pretty critical thing and a logical step to take if you actually care about the outcomes. And it's a small thing too. I mean, I had a gynecologist once who told me, "Call oh me Jennifer. My God. Call oh, me oh, Jennifer." Yeah, different, different giant call. Yeah, different one. I, I thought you were going to talk about the guy you for that appointment. I thought you were talking about oh. the guy. <laughs> I mean, we could talk about that too. <laughs> Do you want me to tell the story? Yeah, right? you tell okay. it. It's your story. Go ahead. So. I was having a particularly challenging time with that special time of the month. The floor was really heavy. Things were intense. I was in a lot of pain. Content warning. Yeah. Sorry. Zach's okay. got it. No. Gosh. It's fine. Thanks. It's okay. Ah. So then I decided to go to the doctor. And at that point, I'm like, I don't care who I see as long as I can see someone. And the doctor had literally said to me after I explained what was going on 
after I paid my copay. Yeah, yeah, after all at this point. Uh, I don't really know anything about lady parts. You should probably see a different doctor. You know, he's, he, I thought he said, like, I don't have those parts, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, was like, essentially just wow. like... Wow. I'm not a female shrug. It's like, excuse me, Tweedledee, but my general understanding is you've spent eight to ten years in med school and you probably should know something about how, how did he never I everyone's mean, just, equipment. Especially if you're in general practitioner, uh, a general practitioner. How, yeah. how have you never gone through yeah. gynecology of any Oh, any whatever. Type? He's probably just being a total piece of work. Anyway, to Regardless. counter that story, I had some concerns about birth control. And I went to see a different gynecologist and she actually, I was like, hi, Dr. Peoples, you know, trying to be like professional, right? Because she's a doctor. She mm-hmm. earned that title. And as far as I'm concerned, she should be called it. Sure. But um, she was like, call me Jennifer. Like, and that at that moment, like my guard completely went down because mm-hmm. she just like wants me to talk to her like she's a person. Not like I'm a doctor. Peekaboo, peekaboo, here, there, done. Like, she actually, like, took time to peek-a-boo. sit down. Have, have you had a peekaboo experience going to? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe that's even another story I don't know about. Uh, so many stories. So many secrets. <laughs> but it was just, it really, like, put my guard down and made me really open and receptive. And because she had my guard at ease, she really helped me navigate the really... Difficult situation of trying to find a birth control that worked for me that didn't have estrogen in it, and yeah. it was really great. And I'm really happy and thankful for that experience. Right. Yeah, that lady was great. She's awesome. So yeah. So yeah, personal touch can go a long way in medicine. Right. Who'd have thought? And not, not built just, my trust. Not just facts, logic, and and, and spreadsheets that, that make the difference in actual right. patient outcome. Now yeah, the issue is this, when guys. someone asks me, are you a Whatever. feminist, We're all adults here. what am I going to say? I say, of course I believe in equality for men and women, but I don't believe in all the rest of this stuff, whatever else it means. What does a woman even mean to you? What do- someone... I know what a woman means okay. to her. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. A woman means something that even uh, scientists and, and people that study genetics would not agree with. There's a lot more gray area than, than she would be comfortable with. Oh my God, she looks like she's about to like, make a fart sound. Seriously, though, dudes? I think that's what she's going to say next. But anyway, a, what a woman means to me is someone who identifies as a woman. Right. Whoa. That's so, uses, that's so scary, uses isn't it? She, her pronouns? Yeah. Yeah. That's it? That, I mean, that's, that's, that's literally it. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. It's like, you know, let's let's do a thought experiment. Imagine you wake up tomorrow and you, you go to get in the shower and you happen to catch yourself in the mirror and oh no, your genitals are gone. You you look like a, a, a Barbie doll or a Ken doll. Uh you're completely smooth. They have mounds though. That that's not a gender. <laughs> That's just a mound. Or that's not genitals, I should say. That's just a mound. Okay. So, anyway. Keeping on track. You wake up. You're just smooth down there. What gender are you? Are you the same gender as you went to bed? Or are you a different gender now? Are you somewhere in between? I'm guessing most people would say, I, I'm exactly the same as when I went to sleep. I just happen to not have genitals. I mean, to use an even more realistic mm-hmm. example... You have a terrible accident. Somehow you no longer have genitals. You're still alive. You know, mm-hmm. um, you're still able to function as a human being. You just right. no longer have genitals. Are, mm-hmm. Do you just lose your gender at that point? You're just an amorphous person no, at that point? No, because gender is more than genitals. Absolutely. It is, it, is, it is all about what is inside of you. And it's not just feelings. Like they, right. they like to play this kind of semantics game where it's like feelings because like sometimes I feel happy and sometimes I feel sad and that can switch. So it's it's big and scary to me that, you know. No, that's not the kind of feeling. We're talking about the internal identity. Mm-hmm. Like like you know, like hormones. Like I can say I'm I'm a I'm a North American. Um, I am a man. I am I'm a lot of things that I can just say. And and while all of these may technically be constructs, they are still real to my identity. They mm-hmm. still have real-world impact. 
they still affect how I treat other people and how people other people treat me. Mm-hmm. Or what about people that are trans? Like they've done mm-hmm. studies to show that like they have more hormones of the gender they feel that they are, and they tend to have than the ones similar that brain they, scans as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So. So, yeah, it's it's not that Riddle out that, there of a concept Abby. that that some people just through you know a misfortune because it's a, definitely a difficult thing to to have to go through being trans at least in our society today. Oh, absolutely, because but through whatever misfortune, and everything else they happen them. to to their outside body, the way that they present to themselves mm-hmm. doesn't match how they feel inside. How they they make up their identity on the inside. That's that's all that's meant by feelings. So, right. Yeah. Tell us Gender more. is a construct, but it is also valid, it's real, mm-hmm. and it affects the world. Right. Do rights mean to you? This what is why feminism... Mean? The right to do whatever the hell you want with your body. Basically that. The right to do whatever you want, as long as you're not infringing upon someone else. Right. Yeah. Is a dangerous concept, because it is not just about equal legal rights. It is not just about being yeah. equal in society it's about a bunch of well right it's about being equitable but but yeah of other things hidden under the guise of the title feminism and what this made me realize is that and of course notice she never gives any evidence of any of the stuff this is all just off the cuff like you know we just because we come here because we agree with abby we're just going to swallow whatever she says Without also, she doesn't of... define feminism at all. Of course, at any that... point, like her personal, Which, is... like this is my take on feminism. Right. This is how I define feminism. Or, or, or even I'm if... a first wave feminist. Right. If if she were to say even like these these are the things that I think feminism should be, or these are the the positive aspects that feminism was, and if and if it were that way today, I would agree with it. But she doesn't do any of that stuff. She completely does what she accused the the left of doing before which is making things purposely obscure mm-hmm. in order to obscure your own meaning and and be able to kind of dance around and plausibly deny any sort of thing that that people try to, st- to stick to you because mm-hmm. my name is abby and i don't have to explain myself. and i and i and i really i really have to sneeze right now i get to you oh that's how she sneezed yeah i wouldn't be surprised Feminists don't understand what the real strength of women is they don't understand the strengths that are unique to us as a sex and what is so there it a is guys term. women are only a sex to her yeah also she's getting into the birth thing right yeah yep. she's to going birth. to this ascent and 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 there it is once the again the trad wife just always comes down to women spit out baby Man, kill other people and work. Yep. That's how society is, is laid out for them. It's pretty There's incredible. There's no nuance. It? There's no possibility for anything else. It's that's what they do. And if you don't, you're wrong and you should be outcast from society. Yep. You should be ostracized. But, but, but of course, it's the left that's intolerant. Yep. Yes. So exciting and powerful about being a woman. And the reason I was thinking about this was because I watched the movie Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Oh, this boy. Is a... I've not seen that. Have you seen this movie? I've seen parts. I mean, I, I'll admit, the way she describes it, there's nothing really wrong with any of it because the woman, though, she, I mean, she maybe was was misled into a position. I'll, I'll, let, her, I'll let her explain it first and then I'll, then I'll explain yeah. why. Well, how kind of you to let her explain herself. Yeah, I'll, I'll give her take and then say why I don't really understand what why she's... Why she's wrong. Well, even what she's trying to make, what point she's trying to make. Like, it doesn't even make sense why she even brings this up. Because it has wrong. nothing to do with any of the points that she's trying to been nope. making so far. musical that came out in 1954. And it's about oh, 50s, a man weird. named Adam Pontipi, who in the 1850s is a backwoodsman. And a he lives in Oregon and a, he comes a, a to town and he's looking to trade some wares as well as to find a wife. And he happens to find one. And her name is Millie. And Millie is actually the main character of the movie. She's been working in a boarding house, serving all of these frontiersmen. And when a man comes in and offers to sweep her away to his beautiful cabin in the mountains and to his farm, she takes him up on the offer. She thinks it's beautiful. She'll be part of a sovereign household with her. And then she'll finally sovereign. be a real woman. Yeah, really. Because she'll be a married lady. And just so you ladies watching know, you're not a real lady until you're a married lady because that's how we classify feminism. 
But it's just the, the way she phrased it. A sovereign household. What a Ooh. what a bizarre turn of phrase. It's, so, we're gonna get into the whole like man is the king of his domain and his castle and blah blah blah. And, and that's really what get ugly. you know. Talk about deception. That's what these 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 trad wives and, and these you know. I think radical should... fundamentalists. That's what they really want. Is is <laughs> some either some form of of actual. Uh, um, monarchy or, or or a bunch of monarchies based on if you're classified by them as a man or or not mm-hmm. you know her husband and when he brings her up to the mountains that is not what she gets she walks into the cabin and finds that he had not told her about these six brothers that he has that live in the cabin with him so starting a marriage with a really big bunch of deceit and a bunch of obligations that were not spelled out in, in, in their agreement to get married. What an endearing movie. Yeah, I mean, that's what I always dreamt of. Me too. I, I, I just hope that someday I'm going to come home and I'm going to find you know, a bunch of other women that, that, that are not going to... I did invite my sisters to move in, so... <laughs> yeah, and I, I hope they're going to be really lazy and ungrateful. Yeah, and I'm going to have to cook and clean for them. Yeah. And... and it's just because, you know, that's what I signed up for, whether I, mean, I knew it or not. I'm pregnant, so I have even more, more to take care of. So yeah. I, hope you, yeah. I hope you're excited. <laughs> oh, how charming. It's, 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 it's everyone's fantasy. It's a beautiful day. None of whom her. have been raised with a woman's touch. I mean, honestly, that's what it is. They are not civilized. They're all and messy. And- so basically what she's telling us. Yeah, is talking about those stereotypes again. The, the Jungle Book. Oh, is Mowgli except <laughs> so the the Jungle Me. Book was just a creative retelling of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Yeah, that okay. that's what I'm getting at. No, you can, I, I, you no, can I have no idea. You can continue. <laughs> no, I, I swear she said something earlier about how the left stereotypes women, and here she is talking about stereotypical, you know, familial roles of, of oh, these men clearly haven't been raised with a woman's touch. They're uncivilized and women are the civilizing force and that's just how it is. It's not stereotypical because I said it with a, a fancy bunch of knickknacks and, and, and fake flowers in my background. Yeah, see, look, at, look, you see our background, not a fake flower back there. We give you the real stuff. And Millie has to make a choice. She has to make a choice. She could return back to town she could run away from what she's been faced with. And instead she pushes up her sleeves, grabs her Bible and says, I am going to build up the men around me and make this house a home. And she does. She oh, makes all wow. of the men in the movie better for story. having been there. She forces them to be the best version of themselves. She, she them makes them eligible bachelors so that they can meet wives. She uses her strengths as a woman to make everyone around her better. And it's a beautiful film for that reason. Now- so, and, and look at what she's calling a beautiful film, a, a sort of story that in her mind would totally preclude any sort of, of same-sex marriage. You know, if, if you were a man getting married to a man and coming home and finding his slovenly brothers, well, you don't have a woman's touch, so you can't possibly force them to be the best versions of themselves. Yeah. yeah the best you can do, I, I suppose, is kill them or, or kick them out on the streets. And what a different tale that would be. Or if it was a woman coming home with, with, with a, another woman. Or mm-hmm. uh, people in a polyamorous I wanna, yeah, I was gonna say, what relationship, open relationship coming home. Well, then, then, you know, some of them would be able to help them be the best version of themselves, but others of them would hold them back and just be more slovenly and, and uncivilized and like... How dare they? It's a very simplistic world that Abby lives in, or at least imagines she lives in, or at least would aspires. want to live in. I think this is what she aspires for. And She's and like... Sorry, but not everyone grows up that way. Right. Uh, not everyone's going to have the same Drive experiences. Life, drive life. Yeah, well, That's... exactly. Not everyone's going to have a rich family, which Abby does. There's there's a reason yeah. that her her I mean, let's let's look at the view. Her husband's for this a one. lawyer too. I just want to put she, that out she there. Has, so she's not hurting for money. By some people's estimations, she has put or or people have put on behalf of her over a million dollars into Facebook ads. Or not mm-hmm. not Facebook ads, excuse me. YouTube ads trying to get to entice people to to come watch her channel. She has only she hasn't even broken a hundred thousand subscribers. So for all of that money, you know she's getting less than a than than a dollar per subscriber back. And for this video too, women are powerful as hell, debunking the feminist lie, which should be like 
the reddest of meats How? for trad wives and, and the sort of people that she's trying to reach. She only has 30,000 views. That's and it's, because it's been a real trad a week wife point, doesn't so. have time to watch this because she's too busy cleaning her house. Well, I mean, there's such a thing as headphones and, and you know. No, she's too busy. She's not, she hates headphones just like me. That's, that, well, that's I, why I we're the same. Speakers are not a thing then, too, in the trad wife home. But No, so it's anyway. a technological advancement. This she's also be, erudite. This should be red meat. <laughs> or not I'm, erudite. What's the word? Luddite. She's also a, a luddite. luddite. Well, she could probably she could be an erudite luddite. Oh. Oh. The complexities of being a trad wife. Yeah. Who knew? Maybe this isn't such a bad idea. Oh. Just kidding. Play it. Keep playing. No, no, no. Uh, but the point <laughs> I'm trying to make is for all of that money that she's put in, and 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 as as much as this should be, you know, targeting her, geared very precisely towards her uh, obvious demographic that she's she's looking to reach, she's hardly getting anything in return, and. She doesn't, I, as far as I know, she doesn't have a job outside of this. So no, she doesn't. basically the situation we're in is this rich girl is, it has had her entire YouTube channel astroturfed by rich relatives so that she can spout her really dull, uninformed opinions to, well, I mean, judging by the comments, let's, let's even look at the comments. Oh, that's my comment right up the top. There we go. That's because we're in your YouTube right now. Uh, yeah, so every one of these videos, you have to go pretty far deep into the comments to find anyone that actually agrees with her. <laughs> and, but she keeps going, and she keeps thinking that she's making this real difference. Because she's a rich girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you definitely rely on, on someone's money. Gonna rely be surprised on if daddy's old money. money. Yeah. Gonna rely well, on a daddy. Old man's money. It's the same thing, but... Old man, daddy, same, yeah, thing. Yeah, same thing. Daddy's more modern. Well, you know, she's got a touch of modern. But see, we gotta. You know, that's true. I mean, you know, how many other trad wife would would tear apart her entire aesthetic? How many actual, uh, uh, you know, fundamentalist Jews would would rip apart the idea that she's even appearing on screen where she could, you know, arouse men? That and her would just hair's be uncovered. Completely forbidden. Her hair's uncovered in front of people that she is stranger to. Uh, she's using technology. Well, I mean, no, that's not, they're, they're not Amish. Uh, hey, fundamentalist Amish Jews still use payphones. technologies. I mean, th there's no, <laughs> you're muddying the point. <laughs> the point being, they would have a lot to say about how she is not presenting in a traditional way and she's not conducting herself in a traditional way. In fact, even trying to, to influence public opinion rather than just being at home would be something that would be outrageous to, I, I would, I would assume most, uh, very fundamentalist Jews. So she's out of control. So she doesn't acknowledge that she's not even conforming to her own, you know, supposed culture and traditions standards mm -hmm. at the same time, she's chastising everyone else for not conforming to her specific cultural standards even while not clearly defining them yeah well and that, we're not mentioning anything about being able to choose one lifestyle or another we don't like choices obviously not so that's not something that i she like can ever to be on. told what to do please don't overwhelm me by giving me choices yeah 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 you definitely do like to be told what to do you can't even fake that one. I know. <laughs> I don't like being told what to do. Well, who does like being told what to do? Like, like that's the thing. No yeah, one wants to just be ordered it. around and, and have their entire life managed for them. I mean, I'm sure there's some people that, that get off on that, but for the most part, people want to live yeah, the life that they want to live. Yeah, they usually pay good money for it. It involves leather and red room and a lock. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's totally <laughs> other issue. Some other materials. Let's continue before we get too risque. Oh, no. Oh. no now, she doesn't ask the men to be weak. Instead, <laughs> she encourages them to find the best part. Why, why would she ask the men to be weak? That's, I don't even understand the point she's getting at. Would keep Keep being slovenly. Don't, you know, provide for the brother who provides for you. D don't try and get the things you want in life. Be weak. Why would anyone what say that? What does she even mean by weak? Well, she's not going to define that, obviously, so we're just all left to, to She means it. when men cry. But guess what, boys? You can cry. And you should cry if you feel so inclined. That's true. 
men should just be like, able to should be just as free to express their emotions as as women. All of the emotions. Anger's not the only emotion for you. Well, there's I mean, there's also lust too. And so. Lust. Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. Because anger, <laughs> lust, and 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 cruelty. Men can't control themselves. That's what makes them weak. So <laughs> women have to be modest in order to keep men in oh, line. Oh God, that's that's like the entire <laughs> thesis of her modesty argument. Every time that comes up, so it's a fine paper. It's about one half page long. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Double spaced. Yeah. It's- of their masculinity. Oh, this is all indicative of what five. women's strengths are. Watching 4. the movie, 5. you wouldn't blame Millie for returning to her life in the town. That would make sense. She was kind of blindsided by this scenario. But the way that Millie's character decides to proceed forward is indicative of something greater. Wait a minute, she had a choice in this? No one would falter if she went back to the, 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 the old life that she had, but she chose to do this? And this is seen as a virtue. So, well, I thought women shouldn't have. I thought choice was not a, a good thing. It's it's all just so confusing, Abby. Like without without Millie, how could those men learn to not be savages? I mean, they could just like be, listen, be adults and and take care of their needs and and the needs of others too. I can't. Wait. What? It's gone now. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You're going to do another bit, were you? Maybe. Okay. I well. know. I'm not allowed to do bits. I'm going to get fired. No, you can do bits. <laughs> I'm but... not going to allowed to be on next Sunday. I'm going to get in trouble. Women have a unique strength, and it gives us purpose, and it gives us fulfillment. We what set strength is the that, standard. Abby? No, no For... why, why would... A man not be able to do the same thing. Why couldn't any? Why couldn't the brother, this 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 hardworking, not so honest but hardworking brother, come to his 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 brothers and say, "Hey guys, I know you want more for your lives, right? You want to have brides like like I'm going to find in the village, right? Or even when he gets home, look, brothers, I've set a good example for you. I've found a wife by taking Lying care of myself by and- by taking you know." <laughs> By taking a, a bath at least fortnightly, <laughs> by by uh, actually having a you know, not, I, I, it sounds like he didn't have a job. I'm not quite sure what what backwoodsman I suppose. There's extra trees back here. Perhaps we could all go cut down. I, I don't know the if trees. he's paid in wood or or how that works. That's but... how they manage to build the shack that they live in. <laughs> Are they, are they like just a beaver family? Are they eating the wood too? Like, I don't know. I don't understand the exchange rate. Oh my rate. God. What if they made a remake of that movie, Seven Brides for Beaver and there were beavers? I suppose that would be <laughs> something. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Uh, Anarcho Doomerism says, I hate right wingers. I do too. But I mean, at the same time, well, obviously, even though Abby is, is well known, she's Probably more well known to left wing people seven at this point than, than right wingers. So at least we have that to, to take comfort in that she's not having very much of an influence on the culture. But her brother definitely is. So Gross. that that family on on the whole is definitely damaging to the country. You know what's a really fun fact about the Shapiro family? The faces are interchangeable. Don't get into that. That's just that gets to be like body shaming, mean stuff. Don't do that. I'm just saying the genetics are really strong with that. Yes, clan. you can definitely see the resemblance. Anyway, anyway. Ow. We can we can criticize we can criticize Abby without having seven to talk about seven appearances. Beavers. Seven brides for seven beers. It's the next Broadway <laughs> hit. I'm gonna write it. <laughs> anyway, Maybe we can well, use the Angry Beavers from Nickelodeon. <laughs> Oh boy, there would be a the the crossover that's Animated. been in the making for decades. My point that I was trying to get at was Mr. Backwoodsman. I don't know if he had a, an official job or if he was just kind of a homesteader and he just kind of made his way in the world. Whatever, he was supporting all his brothers before that. I don't know why he couldn't have just come back with his bride, say, "Look at fellas, if you really try, you present yourself, you 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 talk nice to a woman, you too." Can can get the bride. But he you lied all. to her. Well, this he didn't have to lie to her. He could have just come back and said, "Hey guys, I'm I'm instead going to set a good example to you. There's going to be some changes around here. You guys are going to have to start pulling your own weight, helping me with my backwoodsmanry." 
to, my, I don't know how to make that into a, my dam dream. <laughs> maybe he was building a dam. Who knows? Maybe maybe it really was seven brides for seven beavers. Anyway, he could have he could have instead said, "Hey, look, guys, I'm setting this good example. Now get your asses out there and do the same." Why is it only a woman who could have made them see the arrows of the, of the light feminist because, touch? And like, because women are just so gentle. And we explained to you why. N- Newsflash, men can be gentle too. There's nothing that, that is inherently <laughs> rough or crude about any man. Oh, that's not what I've come to discover. I mean, the only reason that, that, <laughs> that boys come up believing that it's not okay to cry and you have to show strength. And, because and they never feed it out of them. Well, I mean, quite literally, that, yeah. that is the case sometimes. But also just they're strongly culturally pressured into not showing these Believe emotions. the phrase, don't be a pussy, has come up a few times. But what does that tell you about the human nature, the default human nature mm-hmm. about men? It's that they are, by nature, just as sensitive, just mm-hmm. as, as emotional as women. It's just they've been culturally conditioned into believing otherwise. Mm-hmm. Let's keep playing. Let's get into it. Civilizations. Oh Feminism doesn't give women credit for all of the power they already hold. So what? I think you don't give women credit to be able to do the sorts of things that you don't think they traditionally are supposed to do. It's because she doesn't think that they can. Yeah. So, oh my God. But, but like any place I pause in this video, it's like, uh, you know what, bro? Bruh, I got banana bread at work today, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> like I just expect a vape cloud to come out with her next sentence. <gasps> Wouldn't that be cool? Classically. I bet it'd be flowers or like red, white, and blue like the flag. Classically vapey. <laughs> Are these unique strengths that women have? Well, number one is that women make men better. Modern Men can't make men better? It's all on women's shoulders? If I'm, if I'm a loser and, and a bad person, it's your fault. Yep. How do you feel about that? Amazing. Cause it's, it's amazing. And she was talking before, like the, the beginning of this video. I know it gets so garbled by the time you even get halfway through that it's hard to keep track of all the positions she's taken at various times. But she did take the position that, um, oh God, where was I going to go with that? God, I lost my train of thought. Um, so yeah. Uh, she was she was saying that that by by saying that women are are, are victims or weak. or weak or in any way that 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 um, they don't have any agency and they're not powerful and they're not strong. What does that say about men? If the only people that can make men better is a woman, that says that they're weak, doesn't it? Yeah. Only only a woman can can shape a man into a, yeah. or a boy into a man. Or That's right. A man into a responsible man. Or <laughs> right. That's how she does it. Is with fucking. Oh, why, I'm just kidding. Why did you? <sighs> now I'm going to have to put a language warning on oh, the YouTube. No, sorry. Not, really. I think YouTube, you can, you can have like up to six. Oh. So like use them sparingly. <laughs> well, we've only got five minutes left. If we've ever it's finished playing it. It's taken us two it. hours to get through yeah. this many minutes. And you thought we were going to be like just breezing through this video. <laughs> Little did you know that you had all these these little one acts that you're gonna throw out every time Abby stopped speaking, <laughs> which is great. Like, I'm glad I think that, it's gonna I'm draw an audience. It, it, absolutely, I'm glad that it's taken this turn. I think this has been a really great experience. <laughs> but I knew it was gonna take longer than just an hour. Whatever you win. Modern feminism says that anything men can do, women can do better. But, but it's, it's only because you've is, made me strong. Women and men are not the same. It's not about trying to compete for women to be better than like, men. Like I've at what just had to bench press at. you in order to it's get muscles, right? It's about women embracing the things that make us strong already. We don't have to fight the urge to play video games for hours on. Oh my god! That's not true because I don't own any video games. Feminists not. make all kinds of stereotypical statements about women. You know what, though? We don't own any video game consoles because I have a problem. See, that we, I we can't definitely, stop. Right. So what would happen if we did own a video game console? Would you just not have to fight the urge? No, I would definitely have to fight the urge. I'd probably have to have you take the PlayStation to work or something I with mean, you when you leave. Because I would play all day. Obviously. And there'd need to be a timer, like child locks or something. <laughs> slip it off. So, again, this... this 
I mean, this, this, this notion was around like the 90s when video game consoles were first getting going that, oh, it's a boy's thing. And, and that's not actually. No, it's not. No, it's, even from the beginning. when there Why was, would like, they put female characters in video games like Mortal Kombat yeah, and so you can look Street at the, Fighter? So you can look at their triangular boobs and stuff. But anyway. Uh, no, it's so the girls can play too. Well, that, that definitely is part of it. And in fact, when, when video games started out, uh, they, they were marketed towards men and women. But then some game designer, I don't know if it was in the Atari, I think it was in like the Atari era, decided that somehow games were for boys. And so they only put them in like the boys section. I think it might have even coincided with the time when they started segregating the sections of the stores to make mm-hmm. one thing which is like blast your face pink with all the Barbies and stuff. I love it that it's switched like, now. Really too. cool blue for all the boys. And and now it's back the to the other figures. way where it's all mixed together. Yeah. But anyway, so, so, so at some point, not through any natural cause, because girls were just as likely to play video games when they first came out, but just some, some dude, some marketing guy decided we're going to market this towards guys and we're going to make only titles that, that we think are going to be, you know appealing to stereotypical guys and, and like all this sort of thing. Uh, so, but anyway, that, that, that notion that only women play video or, or only men play video games, it it's died so- in the early 2000s when, when there started to become like um, Gamergate. When was that? That was like 2012, 2010 when Gamergate happened. Let's Google it. That, that was like the kind of the death rattle of the, the, the notion that only men play video games or that anytime there's a woman in a, in a video game, it's political. It's, it's like that, that trope that, like, there's men in video games, and then there's political. And then and there's straight, and then there's political. And then there's, there's, there's cis and political. And, like, those are the two categories for, for games and movies and, and all sorts of nerd. Okay, 2013. So at least she has no excuse now, almost 10 years on from Gamergate, to, to have the idea that only men play video games. Look at any random day on Twitch. You'll find dozens, probably hundreds of women playing a a multitude of video games. She plays Bioshock with her husband. That's right. She played it with her husband. She's like, like, "Uh uh, I'm too feminine to want to play video games. She played it along with him. It was no big deal. Yeah, she had some semblance of an idea of what was going on because she wasn't dying every two seconds. So (laughs) She needs to get hit with a Kiwi is what someone said. Video games are for dudes. Women I mean, have no I place in Call of Duty. I wouldn't hit her with the Kiwi. I really Joking. like Kiwi, but we could use something else. <laughs> well, what would your fruit of choice, if you were going to do a run by fruiting of, of, of Abby Shapiro? A durian. Oh my God. You want to like knock her out? That's that's mean. Fine. A mango. Okay. A mango is acceptable because that's going to have a nice little splatter. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, like, something that would be, like, squishy, like a banana or something. The green ones aren't squishy. <laughs> well, fair enough. Anyway. Oh, he's getting in trouble, you guys. What, what, she, she, so she spends the first part of the video talking about how feminist and the only thing around about stereotypes about the women. But now she's pulling out stereotype after stereotype about what women are Essentially, I mean, I usually as though spend, there's only one way to be right. I mean, twirling around in a pink tutu, yeah, right? With curlers in your hair, yeah. Playing with Barbies, T- talking, talking to your friends, your friends about going phone. to the mall, yeah, yeah. I found the coolest recipe in my Better Homes and Gardens oh, cookbook, oh and goodness. I can't wait to make it for dinner tonight for my husband when he gets home from his job. I just hope that he makes it home before 6 o'clock because I got this meal on a tight timer and I know those kids are going to be real hungry too. And you can't keep the kids waiting, otherwise you can't get them to bed. I, li- I like this character. This is this is a new one for me. What do you, what do you call this one? Sheila. Sheila. I was going to go with Marge, but but that works too. Or Babs. I mean, who, Betty. I'll be whoever you want me to be. I'm your. I'm well, your, of course, but but you know, only after. I'm your trad wife. Only after you shape me into the man that you know that I can be. Then well, then that's can, just a subtle kind of mind Then I can buy buy my you essence. Think I'm smart enough to handle. I can buy my essence <laughs> and force roles on you after you've. That's what you molded think. Me. That's what you think. <laughs> on end or to be you ridiculously promiscuous but, but men do don't. have those struggles oh wait she just said another bunch of crap <laughs> i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have uh, there's no easy i gotta get version. 
I'm going to go back. What did she say? Something about promiscuity. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's, I'm sure it's going to be a real enlightened take. The urge to play video games for hours on end or to be ridiculously promiscuous. Did you know that only guys want to do it? Only men I, have urges. I feel like I have to tell y'all another story. <laughs> oh, no. Are you going to do it year in the, the Babs voice? Sheila. My name is Sheila. Oh, Sheila. Sorry. Don't sorry. mix me up with your girlfriend sorry, again. Sorry, Sheila. Oh you think I don't know, I know. <laughs> it's only because you didn't mold me enough. I'm working on it. <laughs> it's kind of tough. He's like half dried out Play-Doh. Oh, gross. <laughs> that dried out Play-Doh is the worst. You get so sad. All you wanted to do was come home and play with that, you know, that nice fresh scent of, of Play-Doh, but that's all gone. It's just a dried up old husk of itself. Just like you will be when I'm done with you. <laughs> Set you up for that one. <laughs> oh. oh, promiscuity. <laughs> Another the... brilliant freeze frame, by the way. <laughs> like, there's, there's literally no place you can freeze it that she doesn't look like... Derpy. Don't, that's probably not a nice okay. thing to say anymore. She's making unflattering facial f she faces. She looks hot. <laughs> She probably wants some Fruity Pebbles. She's talking about promiscuity. <sighs> now, I have a dear friend of mine. We'll just call her Jenny. Who had a year of the hoe before mm -hmm. she met her husband. Mm -hmm. And she really enjoyed her year of the hoe. You mean because she it wanted helped. to have sex? Yeah, with she all sorts. She had sexual urges? She absolutely did. That's and something she only for guys. No, sex urges are what for that, everybody. Because like, if I was her husband, I would be so offended if she was talking this way right now. Well, it's he like, does. He does. He doesn't watch the videos. She's literally saying that that he she never has any urge to to sleep with him at all. She just lays she in the bed. She just does it so that she can get. That's what preggers. we all do. That's what ew, we all do. Ooh, what an unfulfilling sex just life. Just put a hole in the sheet. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how people do Is that. Is it a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> it's the ghost of Oscar Mayer. <laughs> oh my god, this is so great. <laughs> uh, more comments, no? Uh, no, that was just, uh, um, yeah, women have no place in Call of Duty. There's, there's the, the joke emoji after that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, women play all kinds of video games. What a dumb, old-fashioned stereotype. Like, you're, you're 28 years old. You should know better, okay? Mm -hmm. You can't be that completely oblivious to the world. I don't, Especially if you're on YouTube. Like, you have to... You have I to willfully know. be that ignorant to, to, I to can say crap be. like that. I can. Yeah. Because like I watch the Daily Wire every day with my brother Ben. But yeah. Like, literally, oh, you enjoy video really? games. I know yeah. plenty of women that enjoy video games. And I, I know plenty uh, of... Uh, I, I actually know... Several uh, Twitch streamers who who ha are a, a, a man and a woman, and they play video games together and on I'm their Twitch stream. Far meaner about it than he is. Well, yeah. The video games, like I get way too into it, and I know she that really I does shouldn't. Get, she gets. She really wants to win. Yeah, like they want nothing more. Yeah. I'm not usually. I'm not competing with anyone but like myself. It's, it's, it's just not I a really day if I don't hear her raging about th those, angry, those birds. angry birds. Yeah, that's the latest one. Yeah. It's so bad. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> Oh. Alrighty, Abby, what do you got to tell me about now? It's something real big and, and... I can tell by your eyes it's real important. Yeah, it's taking okay. a lot of effort to get this thought out. US. But men do have those struggles, and it's our oh, responsibility yes. to help them yeah. not sink to their level. Men when have, feminists men convince us that it's not our responsibility to take care of men and to make civilizations great, they're... <laughs> make America great again, even, Abby what, what Shapiro you, version. Are, what if you're a woman who does not want care for a relationship, a romantic relationship with a man at all? What if you're a man that's asexual? Are you just abdicating your responsibility to all of civilization? Yeah, yeah what you, I'm not just saying yeah. a, a lesbian or, or bi or, or anything else. Yeah, asexual or, or... It happens. I mean, I mean, there's many different ways that can shake out. You may want to... I mean, not even getting into all that. What if you're all those a man people just don't exist in Abby's world? What if, what if you're a man who wants to care about other men? 
Yeah. Like those people apparently just don't fit in. They're they're just always going to be what the wrong it? size jigsaw puzzle that doesn't fit with any of her the pieces that make up her yeah worldview. All five of them. Uh, how limiting. How how. What an impoverished point of view that you can't even conceive of these things. Like, you can tell she hasn't even considered these points of view at all. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even occur to her that there may be people that don't want to do that sort of thing. Don't want to in, make, <laughs> invest their entire life into, you know, raising an adult. I only do what my brother Ben says is right. Oh, don't even start with it. <laughs> No. You should watch The Daily Wire to really get my point of view. Then you'll understand yeah, yeah. me better. Well, that, that, I mean, that's Hashtag it. trad wife for life. Trad wife gang. She, it's, it's very clear that she doesn't really... Hashtag have... I shop at Von Maurer. Hashtag oh my, okay. Trump's America. Yeah. Hashtag... Hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag cottage core. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop. Let's play it. Oh, I feel bad for people that are into cottage core and have to interact with these sorts of idiots all the time. Like, that's just sad. Like, you just, you, you want to have this aesthetic of, of uh, comfortable clothing or, or whatever it is, you know, the, living your dream life in, a, in like, in a homestead or whatever. And, and then you all actually these guys are a homesteader. And... <laughs> yeah. And then all these people come in and like, and we're going to have traditional gender roles where men are taken care of like babies and, and, and only shaped by women who hold up civilization. <sighs> they're taking Let's away get... a... F- oh, you don't have your little ear buddy. Fundamental role. Loving. Through our love... We- Women can only love men. There's another news flash for you. Apparently that's that's the case in Abby's mind. You know, Zach was totally fucked before I met him. Yeah. Because my love saved him yeah, from destroying his life. It's it's like that song that my love opened the door to your heart and just like <laughs> that, that's basically our story. <laughs> I fixed him. Oh, if I it really weren't if song. it weren't for me, oh, if it weren't for me, there'd be no you. Right, I would just be a little boy living my own filth and and yeah. and not going out trying to get not the wife. pushing himself, not aspiring, not to aspiring his goals. to anything. I would just be. You just be a lump. I would I would just be playing video games and and leering at women all day long. All of them. All of the women. <laughs> and did you know that love is only romantic love? Apparently, yeah. That that's such an essential role of women is to of love course. others but it can only be romantically you can't like yeah. love your own kids and try right. to raise them no 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 no. there's or... two kinds of love you can love like romantic and you can love uh-huh. god but nothing else oh apparently so this... <laughs> we make things it's better to be as women we take care of what we love we build beauty around did you know that men don't take care of what they love they just let it die. Wow, because I definitely know when I've been sad or upset, you definitely ignore me. Uh, I mean, obviously, all of these plants here are, are, are just yours. I couldn't possibly take care of yeah. any of them. Like, I just watered all of them yesterday. Yeah, because you were nice to me because I cleaned the house. Right, and and you you just have to be very resilient on your own because it's apparently not my role to love. It's it's the women's essential role. That's how the plants are alive, guys. Yeah, it's, it's my just, love. Cause, cause her love opened the door to I more like, plants. Psh, 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 psh. Like, because I'm home with them and I talk to them the most. Yeah, even though I've literally had that banana tree since before I knew you. It's having a baby. It is. It's very nice. He's yeah. he's he's. Or she. I don't actually know. You're a great dad. Because bananas have been so mutated that they don't even reproduce naturally anymore. But Congratulations, in-laws. You have, you have a grandbaby <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, wow. Men don't love anything. They just let everything crumble and die. Yep. They, they're not responsible for anything. We're just we're, we're just giant toddlers that women have to come in no, from the town are really to, to get up off their ass and, 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 and get them in gear. Otherwise, we're just going to... Like, how did that... I don't even understand how in that example it worked. Like, if men are just that way naturally, just slovenly and un, unmotivated, how did the one woodsman, the backwoodsman... He lied get to up her. the gumption to go, but I mean, how did he get up the gumption to go into town and and get for himself a wife if the only one who can motivate men is another is is a woman? Well, she worked at the local bar, so he was already going there anyway. 
Oh, okay. Okay, so this just just happenstance. But how was he even getting up the 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 effort to go into town? Like apparently, all his brothers were just acting hey, as men do. It's just common knowledge when a man like gets pigs. stressed out. All he does is go to the bar after work. But he, he has nothing. But else he worked going as a backwoodsman. On. Like he would have had to actually make an effort to go into town. How do you think he had the money the for the beer? I don't. Th- I, see, I'm not office, even aware that he had money at all. Because this is in the 1950s. He's like printing his own wooden he... nickels out of his his woodsmanry. <laughs> it's beaver money. <laughs> don't call it beaver money. Oh my God, we are totally off. The rails <laughs> Did you know at this that point. he made Washington dentures? That's a really sad joke because actually Washington made his dentures out of slaves' teeth. Yeah. That's oh, the man. real story. That's Mr. I Cannot Tell a Lie. I thought that they were made of wood. No. Oh, my god. At least gosh. not all of them. At least part of them were made from his okay. slave's teeth. Wow. Well, yeah. now that I'm going to go cry. Yeah, that's that's one of our founding fathers I'm who sorry. was completely in- ineffable. We cannot question their word at all in their... their so he lies they, and takes other people's teeth. Yeah, and, and moved his <laughs> slaves around to get around the laws that ended slavery in the North. Gross. So that his, his wife would have slaves to always take care of her after he died. Because she can't take care of herself. Because well, she is just weird. a woman. But weren't some of the slaves men? How can a man slave take care of, of his master woman? <laughs> <laughs> I can think of some ways. Oh, gross. That's really gross. <laughs> That's that's like that's like <laughs> oh come God, on don't... you don't think that went the other way for real? I'm I think sure it did. it did, but that's still really <laughs> egregious. Don't don't. All right. <laughs> Always get in trouble if I don't get it yelled out at least one time. <laughs> yeah. You sure there's not like vodka in that cup there? <laughs> no, the bottle still has dust on it. Well, that's true. <laughs> All right, let's con- let's continue on before we <laughs> say something we really regret. <laughs> Okay, we should hurry up so we can go to bed. Ourselves. We make houses into homes. We make communities better. Ugh. We make men better. We make families stronger. And this happens individually as well as... This. So, just a note, ladies. If you're not in a family, you're nothing. Apparently, you can't Vitally. make anyone So, on an stronger. individual level, if a mm-hmm. woman raises her son to be good and upstanding and have wait, good... Wait, so who makes women able to make other people better? Is it just other women? I'm not following this whole. I, God chain has of a events. magic wand. Oh, so and it's God, just God only lays the. Oh, God wand. did it. Well, I mean that explains everything. Let's continue on. Good values and morals. Guess Case what? Closed. He will be a good, upstanding man. If a woman tells a man that is interested in her, I won't date you unless you get your act together. Guess what? He might get his act together. Or she might be in mortal danger. Because she's turned down a very fragile, egoed man who. Now is obsessed with her and had his or pride he, hurt. He might not, and he might go look for someone else. Yeah, he might just look for someone who won't have those standards. Yeah. So, a little hole in that scenario. But. On a societal level, the quality of our men is responsive to the quality of our women and what we demand of men. So think about the women's liberation movement. It encouraged women to have sex as thoughtlessly and mindlessly as men did. Who's to say men have sex thoughtlessly and meaninglessly? I'm it sure there are plenty some... of men that have multiple partners and still go in for an annual STD check every right. year. What it did was encourage them to have the same standards of sexual behavior as men. Where right. Even to this day, it's not thought of that much mm-hmm. if if a prominent man cheats on, on his... his, his uh, female spouse but, right it's like oh not surprising but if it goes the other way around oh my god it, yeah every how, every sort of how dare she what a harlot what a what a trollop <laughs> harlot a, a soiled dove <laughs> gross just gross uh, oh okay because harlot i'm sure it comes from a really good place well it has a word that's similar to heart in it so you know she's really invested Okay. Like women are in everything they do. I think I think you're making one of those Abby Shapiro leaps. Oh no, this is a solid one. <laughs> okay, well I'll just <laughs> take your word for it. Yeah, you that should. we I'm shouldn't woman. tie love and sex together. That they are Never separate. That. And so if you have an urge, just go ahead and follow it. Pause. Before that, in case you've all forgotten, 
Love and sex are not mutually exclusive, nor do they have to be. However, I think yeah. it is your duty to your partner to clarify. That, that's part of that consent and, and being hey, on the same page. I'm just looking for a one night stand. Not going under false pretenses, yeah. Or a friend with benefits situation. Sure. Or I'm looking for something more serious. So if you're sure. not wanting something serious, please don't get intimate with me. Yeah, that, that's that's about what feminism is. It's about treating people with respect going into things, not not tricking them into coming out into the backwoods to raise up their pig brothers into real men. It's, it's about being straightforward and <laughs> honest beavers. with the beavers. I thought we talked about this. Like the, not. not not kicking the beaver clan into to shape. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how badly I'm going to make a play about okay, that Okay, we're going to keep on going. Started. <laughs> Men were forced to wait until marriage to have sex. If they No, they weren't! In no society were they forced to wait till marriage. Also... <laughs> no society. I think of that special song by those two girls about the different hole that you can use. Oh, we were just going... <laughs> you were getting real punchy. Sorry, I'm really tired. Okay, well, we're going to finish this as quickly as we can. They wanted to have sex before marriage. They would have to go to less reputable places, and that's the point. They had to go out. No, they wouldn't necessarily have to. People had affairs with each other's wives, with each other's uh, unmarried uh, children who... Or, uh, unmarried uh, adult underage, children. Yeah. that not, not, not underage. Maybe underage sometimes. Okay, but, like, I'm saying... Mm, I'm not taking it there. I'm okay. saying people had... They had choices. Legitimate affairs, consensual, we'll say consensual affairs, mm -hmm. uh, with people that were not ladies of the evening. Also, what's wrong with being a lady of the evening? It's very clear what your job is, and it's very clear what's happening. And, also, and, towns that had brothels tended to bring in more income. Right. Well, this I mean, is as, why we as long as you're not forced, prostitution. Right. As long as you have <laughs> bodily autonomy, you're not forced into it, you're mm -hmm. allowed to make your own choices, right. there should be no problem with it. Absolutely. But, but... Still, like, the idea that no one fooled around with each other. Like, it just wasn't in public. And if it did get brought to the public, it's because yeah. a woman transgressed. Because women were seen as property of a man, if not now, then in the future. You know, they were either property of, or they were either property of their father until they get married, or their husband after they are married. And, and so to transgress is, to, is the same thing as someone stealing from you. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was a crime. If you stole someone else's stuff, though, not as much of a transgression. All I've ever wanted to be is someone's property. But really, has, did, I mean, oh. she's so in love with these traditional ideas. Has she never studied the history of any monarch ever? Like, they're, they're just tons of philandering and, and concubines, and, and it's just riddled yeah. with people that are outside of, of their, their marriage bed. And, it, and in many cases, it was not even frowned upon at the time because right. they were considered... It was expected. Right. They were considered like, to, you know, well, for one thing, they had to produce a lot of heirs to keep their line going. And think about Bridgerton, the oh, wife... Let, let's please think about Bridgerton. Well, well, I mean, she loves it, so I figure it's a good Oh, that's segue. right. She does love that show. So, like, <sighs> the lady got to pick a different partner outside of her marriage. Right. Right, that, 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 just like that the could husband be a common did. thing too, and and but so, also because these people were such high status, no one could really question them. Right. But the the idea that no one ever had sex outside of marriage, right, un until the women's liberation movement is so bogus mm -hmm. as as to, I mean, look, she smells like it stinks already. She's <laughs> smelling her own opinion at this point. <laughs> Out of their way she's to mad. seek it, it could have physical well, ramifications not, or she's social blind ramifications. To her own they couldn't just go to a bar or swipe right on an app and have a one night stand. Women. You know who else is swiping right? The woman. Yeah. And they're not all just being tricked into these situations. No, like, they're, they're not just thinking they're going, going in. Yeah. Like, hey, I can. As use though they maybe good... have desires and and. Stuff that doesn't always involve marriage and, and long-term yeah. commitment. Weird. Oh, it's I almost... just need to... I've got some urges I need to take care of, and I can't... It's not a DIY project anymore. Or so I'm just not in a place in my life where I really want to handle anything serious, and so... Right. I still like having fun or companionship or, or short-term, non-committal things. Like, all these things mm -hmm. can be legitimate choices, and as long as you're honest with yourself and whoever you're with. Mm-hmm. Women really weren't left in the situations they are today, okay. where they have a one-night stand with someone and maybe emotionally get attached, 
or where they date someone for a long time. Once feminism decided that sexual fulfillment Bailed was the most product, important thing, apparently. regardless of family, regardless of relationships, regardless of commitment, and decided that it was the most important thing for your happiness, the rules changed. Men could now sleep with women and leave. Men could have sex with with women and there was no commitment, no strings attached. Still a woman could get happened. pregnant and so? not have a man to They used to have schools for women that got pregnant before they were in married. They would like whisk them away mm -hmm. to these these, yeah. these special high schools. Right. Because often it was also Pregnancy rape, high. but yeah. Uh, yeah, and and then they would they would, they would go through through school or you know there was there's homes for unwed mothers that that was like a thing yeah because people were ashamed mm -hmm. but it happened like right you shouldn't be ashamed you should probably should be, be more ashamed. ashamed of not giving women a choice with how to handle that situation right absolutely help her and women were left to either blame themselves for not kind of fitting in with this new narrative that sex and love weren't related, or they were blaming they society for making them feel bad. When in fact, the biggest issue is that sex and love do work together and in tandem. They don't have to. Right. People can, they just people can. can be just fine Either having way. one without the other. Right. In fact, there, there, there are people that I, I'm not quite sure the, the, the right nomenclature, but I, I think it's a, a brand of, or, or a type of uh, um, asexuality where they may rom they may uh, want to have a romantic relationship, but not a sexual relationship with, right. with their partner. So then they clarify, mm -hmm. and then the partner that does want to have intercourse and forms mm -hmm. the primary, like, hey, I want to have. If if they're if they're different yeah. that way, yeah, they both right. they both may not desire to have like sex, but still have a romantic relationship. Like, yeah. Anyone who's been in a relationship, it's not like you're just doing it 99%. I mean, maybe you're doing it 99% of the time, but for most... It's probably a lot of chafing. <laughs> it's probably a lot of chafing. But most of your relationship is not having sex. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of other things. And it's not as though you're not in that relationship for those other things. So, the, so for these people, they just don't do that one thing. But they still have a relationship. Mm-hmm. In, in every other sense of the word. They may, be, they may kiss, they may uh, just hold hands, they may do any number of things, mm -hmm. but they may just not do all of them. And that's right. still a legitimate relationship. Absolutely. And that commitment is important when you're having sex. Women found they didn't get the happiness and fulfillment. It can be important. It doesn't have to be. It's up yeah. to the person to choose. You can also try. Yeah, never mind. Just keep going, please. That yeah, feminists I know. had promised. Well, I'm trying to Women wind are the down, backbone just, of it's good like civilization. A bad idea and every five seconds. And we have so much power to, so to much. influence the future. We raise children. We. So should men. Should yeah. men not raise children? No, men should definitely raise children I mean, because every was... time I hear a man say that he has to babysit his kids, oh my god, I want to punch him in the mouth. And I know that that's really rude and vile, no, but, but, but like that's, that's a ridiculous that's your way of child. conceiving. Yeah, you're like, not like I, babysitting. Right. You're parenting. Right. I have kids who I do not live with. They they live with their mother. Mm -hmm. But when I go over to spend time with them, I'm having my parenting time. Right. I'm not babysitting. Yeah. I'm doing the same things that their mother does. I'm teaching them things. I'm mm -hmm. I'm talking with them. I'm playing with them. Right. It's it's no You're different. You're parenting, and 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 the, the, again, these conservative ideas just are so, as she says, paradoxical. Except for paradox is something that doesn't seem like it should line up, but it does anyway. It goes against, you know, common wisdom. Yeah. What she meant was oxymoronical, like they they're incompatible. Okay, so the, 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 here's another conservative idea that's incompatible with what she just said. For, for the entire debate about, uh, about same-sex marriage, their, their constant harping on was, a child needs a man and a woman to be their parents. How can that be compatible with women are parenting their children only? That doesn't make sense. Make men better. We make things run smoothly in our communities and our homes. And we make other women better because 
Men oh, can't so, okay, call so out toxic behavior among women. women. Only women can do that. Wait, what? This is going to go on until like 10 o'clock. <laughs> I'm isn't sorry. It? Um, no, it's not. No, I swear to God. Like, men cannot call it toxic behavior if a woman just walking around like a bar or something and just like smacking every man in the face and like calling them names and like, you know, being really toxic to them or, or even in a subtle way. A man can't be like, hey, 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 I think you're a little out of line here. You know? Women just get, women have just carte blanche, do whatever they feel like in society. That, yeah. oh my God. This isn't to say that women's only role is in the home. But what that it is, is what to say is that we to, are though. uniquely capable of making civilizations grow and be strong. And it is useful. Okay, grow. As in get bigger, as in make babies. As in make babies, yeah, that's the subtext yep. for sure. Not grow as in, hey, we all work with getting in touch with our emotions. Well, they're, or they're, we all work together. Well, they're apparently responsible for everyone being their best selves. Even other women. Whatever. She ain't responsible for And how can you be responsible for another woman if you don't love them romantically? I thought that's the only way you can make someone better. This is just... Just, yep, just Such don't. a level of incoherence that it's hard, it's hard to keep track of everything. Yeah, it's exhausting. Well, to recognize the power we have in that. We have a unique role in building and maintaining society. The fact that men need women doesn't need to make us aggrieved. The fact that children grow and thrive and become their best selves shouldn't make us tired. The fact that society- You're not allowed to be tired if you're a mother? Did you never, did you ever tie your mother up? All the time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did too. Overly friendly. I'm pretty sure every child tires out their mother. You're not allowed to be tired? Come on. Tell me more Ladies about need that women when you have should a baby. not make us resentful. These are the kinds of things yes. that bring women power and purpose. What? It is inspiring to me to think She's about how much. much power we as women have and how we can affect change. To me, it honestly blows my mind to think that women think that they are powerless when we have so they don't, much power. And they shouldn't. When we can control and especially not if the listening outcomes to feminist of ideas. societies. When we can control the outcomes of literal civilizations and we just need to stand up and choose to do so pause there's no choice in anything she says no and that's not what it's all about it's not all about expanding right that makes me more upset than anything else because as a woman who can't yeah. it makes me feel like i don't have value i know that i do but i, I mean I, she's i literally don't know if she would think that, that, me that you and, and women in your situation would have value no of course not she probably this she'd probably like handmaids tail me yeah you'd, you'd be stuck doing maid duties i'd be gray you'd be a, a martha yeah oh okay they're the same thing they call right. them, they, they, it's like an interchangeable thing oh, cool I do like so it, I hope you guys enjoyed That's today's true. video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure to do so and make sure to hit that notification bell. If you'd like to get access to exclusive content not available anywhere yeah. else, make sure to subscribe to my Substack 000. newsletter. The link is in the description Only box below. If you'd like to follow me on social media, it's at Classically Watch Abby absolutely video. everywhere. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye! Well, we don't have time for that. Yeah, we don't got time for anything else. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I'm sorry about my slightly mean comment, but she really shouldn't say how a woman should feel with Absolutely a actual not. children. Absolutely not. If she hasn't experienced that, she doesn't get to dictate that. Even if she has, she doesn't get to dictate how everyone yeah. else has to experience that. Because she doesn't children. have the same kids. Doesn't not everyone has the women. same children. Yeah. Oh. Because what having a, a child on the of, spectrum or a child ideas. with a disability could be far more exhausting than having a n normal child. Call the ambulance. I don't know who's crying, but yeah, sure. Give him a call. Uh, so to recap, Abby Shapiro mm -hmm. knows nothing, absolutely nothing about what actual feminism is. She couldn't even define it anywhere in her long, rambling, incoherent... Like if she Screed. were to do this video correctly, she would have started with my definition of feminism is... It'd be nice to see, you know, some right. backing up of it. It doesn't have to be like, you know, from some particular feminist or it could right. have even been what that feminist that she quoted. It could have been 
yeah. her definition of feminism. Right. But she didn't even say that. No, so. but that's the case with everything. Like any even remotely political thing, she always defers to someone else and doesn't voice her actual own opinion. Right. And it kind of negates what she does. And maybe that's... vaguely gestures at it. I think that's why she doesn't have as many followers as she could have if she would just actually talk, like, truly, from the heart. But then she would actually have... issues. But she would have to actually form coherent opinions at that point. She couldn't just... Well, maybe she should write them down. The the Cliff Notes version of her brother's speeches. Well, she should probably start writing stuff down. Poorly understood Cliff Notes versions of even what Well, if you could just learn to argue a little bit better, maybe you wouldn't have all these issues. Yeah, maybe if she just talked a little faster, then she could just steamroll people like her brother. Well, she doesn't ever have (sighs) any special guests on. That would be the day. I would live for that day. P.S. Abby, if you're watching... Yeah, if for some reason you're watching... Truly would be very condescending of the man streamer. Um, you probably haven't been watching the whole thing, but I kind of went through why I don't agree with any of her opinions. I gave my own definition of feminism. It was backed up by, you know, at least some theoretical texts and and people. Uh, the idea that women should have bodily autonomy and choice in their world, uh, as well as equity to overcome. I do respect women, and you should too. There's a woman right here too. Yeah. I mean, it's not as though we've been disagreeing here too much, so I know it's it's hard to tell just coming in in the last few minutes of it, but anyway, mm-hmm. so our definition that we, we seem to agree pretty much on feminism is that it should be about equity. equity, so if you have extra obstacles because of societal constraints or prejudices or whatever, you get the extra help that you need to, to be, in the same be on the same playing else. the same level uh, playing field as as everybody else you just disrespected the youtuber don't use the female streamer beside you as a human shield for your bigotry um i'm not disrespecting her because she's a woman i'm disrespecting her in spite of the fact that she's a woman because i don't respect her poor incoherent definitions and ideas her her channeling women into only a, a very small set of behaviors making them responsible for the betterment of not only themselves and every other woman but every other man her her completely heteronormative stance that uh only a man and a a woman is 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 the only valid form of a a family unit Uh, i said maybe she should get the cliff notes yeah because her brother as as dumb and and ill-informed as he is at least tries to back up his stuff uh, but she wouldn't understand them because she doesn't. She she clearly doesn't care to understand any of the things she talks about. What? Otherwise, she would have a more nuanced make. nuanced definition. She would present a definition of what she actually thought. So we we've been through this whole video. I know you're just coming in here hot at the at the very end, but we went through the entire video. She didn't say what she thought feminism was. She just tried to present what she thought feminists thought in some very vague ways. Yeah. Do, okay. What well, problem? Whatever. No, what's, I what's want, the problem I want the more problem? information. You must agree with her opinion then, yes. Let, let's let's give our... Please respect women going forward. Yeah. You're not okay. saying how he's being disrespectful. How I don't I, feel I'm disrespecting a particular woman. I'm not disrespecting Not her all. personally. You're disagreeing with her. I think that, that feminism means women should have equity, meaning that they should, they should have the proper support to have a laying, level playing field and whatever... Uh, pursuit in their life they want if they want to have a a high-powered career uh, if they want to uh, raise children and and be a homemaker if they want to do some combination of anything they should have that choice and they should have the means to do it so equity choice you know of course it's a troll but you know sometimes you got to engage with trolls a little bit but anyway um, just presenting our our definition of, of, of feminism so equity, choice, bodily autonomy. Yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna end up blocking Sunshine twenty forty nine, but you know, it's it's probably it's not worth it at this point. They haven't done anything all that egregious. They're kind of a pretty weak troll at that, so not really worth engaging. In. So anyway, would you say that you you agree with that definition of feminism? Yes. Would you I say would that? Agree with that. Would you say that that definition would? empower women including abby shapiro yes if she understood it yeah she she could be the the, the traddest of wives absolutely as long as she's not trying to force women into making that same quote-unquote choice again you have to have a meaningful alternative for there to be choice 
I talk 70% more than the female streamer. Well, first of all, you're assuming our, our pronouns, which I haven't even told you. But beyond that, this is my stream first and foremost. This is the, this is the Bread Theory channel. My, my wife, Amanda, does have her own stream where, where she does the majority of the talking. That's, that's how we're doing it. We're sitting the gender speaking gap. That's okay. You're just making up terms now. That's cool. Anyway, so yeah, if, if we were to live in a world based on that definition of feminism, she would be free to do whatever she wants. Mm -hmm. she, could, she, could, she could be a stay-at-home mom if she so chooses. She could just do her streaming. Um, she could be supported to have a different career. And, and so could her husband. Her husband could be a stay-at-home dad. Sunshine 2049, I've had plenty of opportunity to speak mm -hmm. and have spoken. Had you been on the channel the whole time, you would yeah. have seen it, or heard as well. It's really just a pathetic attempt at trolling at this point. It's, it's like, you know, I know you came in late. You, you haven't had the time to really build up a really good um, Long story short, story. I disagree with Abby's perspective because Abby seems to have a one note view of feminism and that <laughs> that is women are what? she's internalized the patriarchy listen to her so you're just you're just quoting some stuff that you heard on on some anti-feminist channel at this point it's real real big brain take of yours way to go Abby has this very like trad wife is the only life for mm -hmm. her and all other women. And I disagree with that. I feel that women should be able to do whatever they want to do. If you want to stay at home, have babies, take care of the house and, you know, homestead, whatever. That's great. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And I think you should absolutely be able to live that life. And if you want to work or you don't want to have kids at all, you're still a valid member of society. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. What it should be about is just people being able to do what they want. Yeah, choice. Choice. Being able to live the life that you want to live that feels right to you. And it goes both ways because my mm -hmm. brother-in-law did not want to work. Mm -hmm. He wanted to stay at home yeah. with his child and he got to do he that. He got to do that. Because my sister wanted to work mm -hmm. and that worked out great for them. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't, so, I wouldn't say that, the, that their child is, is lacking in anything from that experience at all. Not at all. He probably got a ton out of it. Absolutely. So I think just people need to back off forcing what their perspective is on everyone else and just let things be open. Sure. Like, another thing I want to retouch on is, like, abortions. Like, she's very anti-abortion. Mm -hmm. And, oh, it's just such a monstrosity. It's like... No one's telling you you personally have to have an abortion. People should be able to have that choice and make that informed decision for themselves and to have that procedure done safely. Right, but if but, they so choose. But because she centers all of womanhood on on the on this, like, all this power of women to expand society through having children, mm -hmm. then anything that goes against that sort of thing is is going to be. You know. So I'd like to know how I've internalized the patriarchy. No, no, no that's not a real statement. No, they're just, I, I, they're it, just repeating phrases. No, they don't... Like if we, no, if you're going to say that, then you need to be able to back... This lady Did I say to... anything about third, no trimester, third trimester abortions? abortions? That would be called a birth. Cool. No problem. Yeah, I'm done. Nothing, nothing to say about that one. <laughs> try, try harder, okay? I know that, you know, there's not that many people on the politics channel. Oh, you, were oh, you were listening. listening. That's why you said that's they're you my third trimester abortions, right? Because that's exactly what I spoke about. L listening means pivoting. That's cool. Well, let, uh, let's, let's wrap this up. That's all we have to say about Abby Shapiro um, and her take on feminism as, as bizarre You, know, you and, don't and actually care, so. Uh, the deadline is right now for you, dude. I'm, I'm going to guess you're a dude. Excuse me for misgendering you if that's that's not the case. But I'm going to ban Person. you, so I guess... Bye! I Bye! <laughs> yeah, so they've been banned okay. now. Ugh. Anyway, I thank you all who have, who have stick, uh, stuck with us uh, this time to uh, take apart Abby's take on feminism. I, don't, I have no idea what we're going to do next time, next Sunday for the Soda Stream, but... Hopefully it'll be equally as entertaining and exciting of a topic. 
So we'll just have to get back to you on that. Otherwise, I, I do stream every Sunday night um, at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for kind of a whatever stream. Tonight we took on Abby Shapiro. Otherwise, I do a theory stream. We're going through the Conquest of Bread right now. Uh, chapter by chapter, we read the audiobook, and I usually have a guest on, and we, we chat about it and try to relate it to the modern age. And I do that every Friday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, so come and check that out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and I hope to see you again for future streams. And until next time, like time, friends, and I'm going to raid you. I'm going to raid you into another streamer right now. Let's see who's streaming right now that we can raid.